Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the Tech Guy is provided by Cashfly. C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Networks on Saturday, September 2nd, 2017. This is episode 1418. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Home plays a big role in your life. That's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. It lets you apply simply and understand the entire mortgage process fully so you can be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. Get started at rocketmortgage.com slash techguy. And by Captera. Captera is a free and easy-to-use software comparison site with over 400 categories of business software to choose from and thousands of reviews from actual software users like you. Visit captera.com slash techguy today. And by Tracker, a coin-sized tracking device that pairs with your smartphone and keeps you from losing your most valued possessions. Visit thetracker.com right now and enter the promo code TECHGUY to save 20% off any order. Hello! <laughs> hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here. The Hello! The Tech Guy. Time to talk computers, the internet. I know, I amuse myself. It's good, <laughs> it's good I amuse somebody, even if it's only myself. Home theater... Yes, we do home theater. Scott Wilkinson will join us in half an hour to talk about that. Digital photography, we talk about that. Smartphones and smartwatches. This is the season of gadgets. When I first started doing this show in uh, 1991, in the 90s, uh, we didn't have gadgets. We didn't have gadgets when I was a kid. <laughs> we had computers. That was that was it. That was pretty much the thing. We didn't even have the internet. We were so primitive. Uh, in fact, when gadgets started becoming a thing, and it wasn't it wasn't with the advent of the iPhone. It was before that. I was I I poo pooed it. I said I am not a gadget guy. I'm a tech guy. I'll talk about computers. I'll talk about the internet, but I'm not going to talk about little shiny G jaws, G gaws that you you know. That's that's uh, that Hammerker Schlemmer catalog stuff. I am not going to do that. But what happened, of course, was in 2007, uh, 10 years ago, Apple put the iPhone out. And suddenly, uh, it wasn't really so much a gadget. I don't even think gadgets are the right word anymore. These are computers in your pocket, right? They're more than just little throwaway gadgets, and the price shows that. We're now touching, touching just so ever so ever so close to $1,000 for the top of the line smartphones. And Apple may nudge it over with the iPhone Pro. So we're in the series of, the season of gadgets. And I think it's because we're getting close, you know, to the holiday buying season. So everybody who makes a gadget is going to try to get the gadget out. And that includes smartphones, but also uh, Nest announced its new thermostat. You know, that's a gadget, I guess. These are, these are things that really... Um, are the part of the evolution of technology, evolution of computing. They're, they're pushing computing away from the central thing on your desk into uh, smaller devices that you carry around with you or you put on your wall. Sometimes you can go too far. There was a... And I feel bad about this because uh, I, I've heard that the guy who created this company was actually a well-meaning, nice guy. But you, did you hear the story of Juicero? Oh, it's kind of sad. Juicero was created by a um, serial entrepreneur, a restauranteur named Doug Evans. He, uh, he created a restaurant chain called Organic Avenue. I think he's just not a good businessman. I think his heart is in, heart is in the right place. He wanted to make a juicer that uh, would be easy to use. And, you know, if you've ever owned a juicer, and I have many, because the the principle's great. You know, you put carrots and kale and beets and apples and whatever you have, and you juice them. Uh, it's not a squeezer. <laughs> it's a juicer. <laughs> it's It gets all the good stuff 
and then you drink it. The problem is after that, then you have to clean it, and there's a lot of residue, and you got a lot of cleaning involved. And I think anybody who's ever owned a juicer kind of either kind of grits their teeth and says, "Okay, I'm going to put I'm going to put up with this," or um, gives up, which is what I did. So along comes Doug Evans, and uh, he says, "We're going to create an easy to use." Easy to clean up, more importantly, easy to clean up juicer called Juicero. J-U-I-C-E-R-O, Juicero. And it had this very beautiful, very elaborate juicer. People bought juicers who spent, you know, understand these are expensive, hundreds of dollars. What did he want for the Juicero? I think it was uh, 700 bucks. <laughs> well, that, even that, <laughs> that's a little, but it looked beautiful. Uh, and then what's cool is you'd subscribe to the Juicero delivery service and you'd get packets of stuff in the in the mail uh, every month. And by the way, you had to subscribe because that's the only thing that Juicero could do is take these packets and squeeze, squeeze them out into a, into a cup. And uh, so you had to subscribe to the packets and that cost, you know, I don't know, 30, 40 bucks a month. But I think the beginning of the end for Juicero, well, if it wasn't the $700 juicer and the $40 a month subscription, it was it was the fact that Bloomberg in April, not so long ago, five months ago, published an article saying, hey, you know, we got these packets and you could just squeeze them out with your hand into a glass. <laughs> you don't need the $700 juicer. <laughs> just squeeze it out. Basically, it's a caprice, a frozen Capri Sun. You just squeeze it out. And I think that was kind of, well, that that's, that, let's face it, that doomed Juicero. That doomed it. And they announced this week that they're, they're going out of business. In fact, I, in a way, this adds insult to injury for those who spent the $700 on a Juicero. They're going to discontinue the juice packet creation, too. So now you have a $700 piece of nothing. It, there's not, it literally do, does nothing. And apparently, uh, I didn't know this, but uh, bodegas and small grocery stores uh, were buying these to offer juice. They'd have the juice serum menu. Now they're like going to have to just put it in the back along with the other dumb stuff. Oh, that's not, that's a gadget. No, that's not technology. That's a gadget. And I, you know, I've been told by many who know Doug Evans. This is a nice guy. This is not. He's not. Uh, he's not a scam artist. He's just not a good businessman. Okay. I feel bad for anybody who bought one of those things. Now, there's something that's not a gadget. Of course, is the iPhone. The iPhone's a big deal, and we've been speculating that there'd be a new iPhone um, any day now. And yes, we now know the official invitations went out to the. Uh, I call them the tame Apple Press, the Apple Press who's guaranteed not to say anything bad. A thousand strong, apparently. Uh, and it says, this time we'd like you to come to our place. And it's and they announced it's going to be September 12th in 10 days, a week from Tuesday. And it's going to be at the new Apple campus, Apple Park, in the Steve Jobs Theater. And that's kind of neat. We were, we were, I was wondering, I mean, if you look at the aerial photos of it, it's kind of still, they're still working on it, although... Employees have started to move in. Landscaping's not quite done, but I think you know. I would, if I'm Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, I'd say, let's set a deadline and just force every, just force it to be done. It's got to be done by then because the press is coming. Thousand strong, thousand strong. The press will be there. Not me. I'm not invited, but that's all right. I'm not tame. Apparently, <laughs> I've not been. I've not been tamed. Uh, but I will watch with interest, and I will buy, of course. Uh, I think this is the. I think the rumors now. Once we get close to the event like this, they're pretty accurate. We found much to Apple's chagrin. Apple hates that. That secrecy is tip top for them. In fact, that's a good way to guarantee you won't get in. I, I've not done this, but that's a good way to guarantee you won't get into an Apple event is to leak, you know, information. They've actually sued. They sued a, a web blog out of business. Apple secrets that put them out of business. Because they dealt in rumors, and when uh, Gizmodo, I think it was, uh, bought the uh, iPhone that some Apple employee left on a bar so they could talk about the new iPhone. This back in the iPhone four days, it took years for Gizmodo to get back in. They do get an invitation though. I don't. I don't. I don't rate. I guess or something like that. I don't. I. I you know what? I'm sorry. I didn't. I wasn't going to bring it up. I wasn't even going to mention it. Uh, but we expect there'll be three phones, a, uh, a kind of um, updated Apple iPhone 7 and 
Usually they call these seven, like the 7S. Remember, there's the 6 and then the 6S, 7, then the 7S and the 7S Plus that would just be, you know, faster processor. The A11, I guess, we're up to 11. It goes to 11 processor. Maybe, you know, a little better cameras. Well, incremental. It pro it's hard to imagine much that they could do to this platform. And then the God phone, the uh, 10th anniversary iPhone, which that's the one that's going to probably push us up over, or at least very close to $1,000 with a... Uh, It'll be. It'll make miracles. You push a button and things amazing. I don't know. I don't know. I won't know because I can't get into the event. But I'll tell you afterwards. <laughs> Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I sh I said I wasn't going to bring it up. Your calls next. I haven't heard anybody mention Capri Sun in years. <laughs> You grew up with it, though, I bet you. I sure did. You yeah, bet. Yeah. They look just like that. This year. That's awesome. Squeeze it out. When their computers or servers are hey, wouldn't it be cool if the new iPhone made juice? Why buy an iPhone when for 700 with a few hundred bucks less, you could get a Juicero? Huh. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Good news, by the way, I didn't mention this, but if you bought a $700 Juicero... The folks at Juicero say we will give you a refund, so that is that's nice. A lot of times companies go belly up, and they and it's you're out of luck. You're out of luck. Hey, Kim Schaffer, Good morning. phone answerer. Good Labor Day weekend. Oh, it is. It is. Can I still wear white pants today, but I'm not? I'm going to keep wearing them. Okay. Until... I... It's all you can wear right now. It's 115 degrees. It feels break. very hot here. We're getting <laughs> hot weather. Which we're not used to in Northern California. It was 107 I'm yesterday. Used to it. The people in the city, oh, they're. Dying. Is it hot in San Francisco? It was 106 yesterday. It yeah, they don't. They can't record. handle it. They can't handle no, it. No, they can't handle it. And nobody has air conditioning there because right, they you don't need it. You have what they think of as natural air conditioning. Exactly. And they call it Carl the Fog locally. But Carl the Fog. Yeah, it has a name. He has a Twitter handle. <laughs> well, that's a name. <laughs> He's Carl the Fog with a K or a C. With a K. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Huh. I wonder where that came from. Anyway, Kim, I'm so pleased that you're here on the Labor Day weekend. I am laboring. laboring over a hot phone. Yes, I am. Answering them. And I see you've actually... Somebody called. Uh, I didn't give out the phone. I realized... No, you didn't. I realized you yeah. didn't because it's a little like... Let me give the number out. 888. <laughs> if you want to talk to Kim, forget me. 888-827-5536. 8888-ASK-LEO. And, uh, and this show is a call-in show. Uh, it's it's not me whinging all the time. It's a call-in show. And so I was whining a little bit. I was whining. <laughs> I confess I was whining a little bit. But I'm going to stop now, and we're going to take some calls. Who should I start with? Uh, Bill in Simi Valley. And he's having a problem with his data cell phone package that I think the, a lot of us have a problem with. Uh, it's a thorn in my side, I can tell you that. <laughs> Thanks. Can I sh call you the Shaft? The Shaft? Yeah, go ahead. Thanks. <laughs> Shaft. Thanks, Shaft. I have Who's... a lot of people call me just Shaffer. Shaffer. They just scream out Shaffer. Who's the girl who won't cut out? <laughs> Shaff. I'm talking about Shaff. Uh, thank you, Kim. Bill in Simi Valley, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Bill. Good morning, Leo. How are you today? I am great. How are you? Uh, miserable. Why? Well, okay, I have a family plan with Verizon. We have three smartphones on it. Uh, one of them in particular uses like 86% of the, of the data. Since the start of the last billing cycle, uh, this, the, the phone with the highest usage belongs to my son, who happens to be sitting right here. He's t is just practically using it not at all, just to see what kind of change it would make in his data usage. Today we got our third overage chart, ah. and he's looking. We made a, an Excel spreadsheet of the usage by date and time and all that. And this is this is from the Verizon website, and, yeah. and he's getting massive data usage. Things like at three in the morning, at six in the morning, when he's fast asleep. And well, that that can't happen if the phone goes out and gets mail and things. But uh, what you need to do is look at the phone and see what it says. What kind of phones do, does he have? It's, a, it's an iPhone 7 or an iPhone 6S, I mean. Yeah, the iPhone has usage, cell usage information in the settings. Yep, yeah, we've, we've been there. We've, we've gone through that. Um, does it, just uh, out of curiosity, match roughly? Uh, it, it does not, but that's only because 
when we at the last we spoke with the Verizon rep actually in store, they mentioned to us to take a look at this, and it actually hasn't been reset on my phone. Right. Like December of 2013. Yeah, you got to reset it every month if you want. Yeah, but I reset it when we were talking to them, and right now, yeah, that was midway into the month, and uh, it's already at 7.9 gigs. Yeah. And I have I have Wi-Fi Wi-Fi assist off. Most everything that that should be consuming anything outside of you know having the phone on has been turned off. Yeah, you can look at, beneath the usage. You'll see yep. the apps and each app. And and what app is using all that data? That's a lot of data. What app is using all that data? Ones that I use the most are is is a Reddit app. You know what Reddit is, right? Yeah. Okay. And again, this is all I haven't been. Using. I would look at the App Store because Apple updates its apps automatically. I'm looking at mine, for instance, and I've used 35 gigs in the current period, which is an awful lot. I, I would have an overage uh, if I weren't on T-Mobile. Uh, but I noticed that 8 gigs of that, that's a lot for one month. 8 gigs of that is the App Store updating apps. And it, it's updating apps very rapidly, right? Where does it show? Is there, is, is there an area where you can find um, yeah. the updates? The, like, um, not like the, the update you, you, uh, if, size, but like, is there a place yeah, that... Yeah, if you go into settings in cellular... Uh -huh. On your on your iPhone, and then you scroll down. You know, you see the usage data, yeah. but below that it says use cellular data for, and it shows all the applications with switches next to it. Yeah, and underneath it in little print says how much each one used. Yeah, yeah. So what you want to do is look at what's using all that data and turn it off. Because if you turn off that switch, it'll. For instance, I'm going to right now turn off updates in the App Store over cellular. Well, see, here's here's the thing. This is what's what, what's kind of crazy, is the ones that, like I'll narrow it down to the the three big ones. It's it's a Reddit app. It's my Pandora, which yeah. obviously is or Pandora will streaming music will do it. Sure. And where's the third one? There was there was a Re one. why Reddit? I don't understand why Reddit would use that much data. No, see, that's the thing. Do like, you live on Reddit? <laughs> Reddit for the, again, this is half of a cycle, and Reddit has forty five megs. And that's the second well, biggest. Forty-five one. megs is nothing. You should see gigabytes somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, um, it's called Alien Blue, and it's six hundred and four megs. Yeah, that's it's, nothing. That's nothing. Very much. Yeah. Um, Facebook is at 80, uh, 80 megs. So you don't have anything in the gigs. No, the only thing that's in the gig is Pandora, and that one is at. And and look at. Oh, that one's only at two point six. Yeah. See what I mean? Well, so something's, use, well something's using. Well, something's using it. Even the iPhone is reporting it, right? So there's something using it. You really need to go through, go look at each app and look for. They unfortunately don't sort it. They sort it alphabetically. I wish they would sort it by usage. Yeah, that, it does kind of suck. That but there's it. also at the very bottom there's system services, and it says that's 2.4 gigs. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. There you go. That the top one is time. It, this one is sorted by by size by usage. So the biggest one is at the top is time and location. So my location oh. services, I've turned that off, but it, it it doesn't it doesn't seem to matter because the, the biggest one should be iCloud and uh, syncing to iCloud, and you could turn off iCloud over cell. I actually, I have had iCloud off for quite a while. Wow! So you're not backing up to there. iCloud? I guess that's yeah. Mine is the my, time and location is at two point three gigs. Yeah, mine's at one point seven gigs. What what is it doing for time and location that it's that much? That's an interesting. That's what I'm saying. That's what's yeah. really weird. But with the phone aside, um, I'm looking at my spreadsheet here. Now, I imported raw data from, from, uh, from the Verizon's data usage page, and I highlighted all by time and progressiveness of, of uh, which, uh, which times I incurred you know, most, uh, most data. And there's time frames here that, let's see, there's a 6 o'clock. 200 megs. This is AM. Six, uh, yeah, but, but, yeah, but see, so remember, so the whole point of this is that your phone does this stuff all the time, not just when you're using it. Now, Reddit, it's probably not doing. You're probably only when you're reading Reddit, but system services are going on all the time. Emails going on. App updates are going on. The phone's always updating. How come it's all skyrocketed over the past two months, though? I've never, I, the, the funny thing is, going backwards a few years, I used to listen to Pandora straight all day i used i worked for an armored armored transport company yeah i would You're, we would not be on wi-fi and i would listen some, to my, something's my in there i mean if your phone agrees with verizon so you know verizon will say we don't necessarily match the phone but if it actually does then it's definitely something coming from your phone leo laporte the tech guy you know what you might try doing 
Gosh, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it. I think what you're seeing is not your usage patterns changing, but the iPhone and how it's consuming data changing. But yeah, these data consumptions like are large. Like these the time frames. That so, I'm so does the iPhone roughly coincide? I mean, within a few gigs of Verizon's measurements. Oh yeah, it's, it's incredibly. It's very close. Okay, that's a good sign. Because I have to say, it can happen that the phone company is completely wrong. And yeah, I've heard, I've heard about a whole gigabyte to megabyte area. Yeah, before. yeah. Yeah, I've, but, I've heard of that before. But no, that's not it. So it's not Verizon then. It's really your iPhone. And I, it's, um, I, don't, <laughs> I would uninstall any apps you don't use. You could, you've turned off location services. Um, what else could it be? Uh, well, see, the, the, the problem is... is go, yeah, I, so to, so what's, what, what you have is an app that's... that's requesting location information in the background you can that's a separate thing you can go work on yeah let me find it in in the in the settings and just you know what you're going to want to do is really go kind of lock your phone down turn off all the things that are accessing location that are although i don't know why location would be that much unless your maps application is trying to download maps or something like that well, see, I, I use i use maps um just like my on my daily driving because i like try to get like my drive times Right. But even that, like the, the cell usage on the maps is absolutely minimal. You know what I mean? Right. But remember, it's not just the cellular usage on maps. It's also location. So that's one of the reasons you're getting that high number for location. It to do, it, it's, it's storing in a different spot, in other words. Okay. But, but I mean, even so, that's only 2.5 gigs over the, the past two and a half weeks. So yeah, but I, it adds up, I guess. I mean, that's the point is it adds up. What is your, what is your cap at Verizon? 12. Yeah. We're on the twelve. We're still. We're not on the unlimited. We're still on the time has times have changed because you know it used to be I'd say oh five gigs is enough for anybody. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Everybody's like using their phone the same amount, but for some reason the total amount that gets used every month seems to be going up. I would go into location services and turn off everything you don't need to do location services. No, uh, I'm blind right now. Where is the location on my setting? Oh, I can't remember, but it's in there somewhere. Let's see. Um, is it under another setting? I feel like no. I feel like it's out there, uh, but I don't. But you're right. I don't see it. Might be under general. Let's this. Uh, this is another. <laughs> I love you, Apple, but <laughs> right. uh, they, they, they there's there's no rhyme or reason to where they stick stuff. <laughs> and um, I, I was on it the other day too. I, yeah. I no, I know it's there. Well, you know, you can always do the search. Just search at the top. There's a search location settings. Here it is under location. It's under privacy. Okay, location services. Okay, yeah, I got it. So privacy, location services, and no, no, there's there, there's options for most of these that say allow ac location access never and while using the app. I think while using the app is what you're going to want for apps that you like mapping that you know you want. The board. I mean, the yeah. ones that always or ones that I don't. I don't yeah, then turn them off for for things because the pr real problem here is that apps are not restricted from getting data when the phone's off. And obviously, that's what they're doing. But what what would be like e even if if if, if I was sleeping? And, and, or, or, and Doesn't maybe, matter. The phone's always awake. <laughs> well, I, I know, but I mean, that, but why, why would it consume up to two hundred and three hundred meg at six Cause, in the morning? That's yeah, because because the because an app wakes up because so a hundred apps are waking up saying, "Where am I?" They don't know that you're asleep. They're just saying, where am I? So turn, yeah, that's kind of, the I think, the answer to this. And I'll keep digging, but I think the answer to this is just turn off everything you can. And and I don't know why it's not using the Wi-Fi, because you're at home. And so it really, uh, you know, here's one thing you can do. Um, you can do this on Android easily, is turn off uh, cellular when you're on Wi-Fi. I wonder if there's a way to do that on the iPhone. Leo Laporte. The bump the bump means the tech guy getting a visit from Santa Claus, a.k.a. Scott Wilkinson, our home theater guru. Hello, Scott. Hey, Leo. People on the radio don't know, but you do have a certain familial resemblance to old St. Nick. I do, yep. I have a Santa Claus aspect. And I your laugh is a little bit like a ho-ho-ho. <laughs> it is, yeah, it's true. Hey, Scott, it's good to see you. You're getting ready for Cedia next week. Uh, oh, man, yep. It's uh, in San Diego this year, which is great for me. I'm just going to drive down there. Nice. Super cool, super cool. So uh, Cedia is, traditionally has been an uh, expo for you know home theater installers. 
Yeah, but, but I well, any anything anything custom installation, including central vacuum, security right. systems, right. all sorts of stuff. Of course, I focus on the home theater, which which of which there's plenty. But I'm told this year this will be a big Internet of Things show. In fact, look for Stacey Higginbotham. Uh, she does the IoT podcast, Internet of Things podcast. Oh, is she going to Cedia? She's going to Cedia. And I said, why are you going to Cedia? And she said, because it's going to be uh, Internet of Things palooza. A palooza. <laughs> she didn't say and that. So I didn't. Is. I'm sorry I did at this point. And so, so it, it is. is. Yeah. And so it goes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And in fact, next... Uh, the week after next, uh, my podcast, Home Theater Geeks, on your fine Twit network, uh, will be a panel of people talking about what we saw. And among them is my good friend Mike Heiss, who's uh, often in the chat room, and he's an Internet of Things wizard. So nice. We we will be talking about that as it relates to home theater. I was talking before, at the beginning of the show about how you know gadgets have kind of taken over, and the Internet of Things is one very good example of how computing is just moving from the, you know the center to the edge. It's mm. it's everywhere, and that's really what the Internet of Things are: are toasters, refrigerators, thermostats that are connected to the internet in your house. Yep. yep. I was I was just looking at my uh, my Eero and it says uh, you have forty two devices connected. <laughs> right. I mean, in, in in the early days you had a router so you could have two laptops. Right now, it's right, 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 crazy. But of course, and of course, um, the the other the other part of that is voice command. Ah, you know, and I'm loving Alexa, that. Alexa, Siri, and so yeah. on, and that is starting to get integrated into home theater equipment. I mean, you can now control home theater stuff with with an Echo and and uh, Logitech Hub. And yeah, I use the can... Logitech Hub. I really like that feature, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. But soon, and I think we'll see a lot of it at Cedia. There will be you won't even need that because all of the devices in your home theater will will just have this capability built in. Wow. Uh, Harman Kardon is going to release a uh, Cortana device. I think probably they'll announce it at Cedia because I think it's like this month. Oh, well, then they probably will. So that's Microsoft's Siri. Right. <laughs> for, right. Want, for want of a better name. Now, this is an interesting question. What's going to happen when one device implements, uh, you know, Alexa and another one implements Cortana and another one, you know... Uh, are they are they going to be at cross purposes? Well, uh, I don't know. That's actually t an interesting point because uh, this week Microsoft and Amazon announced a relationship. Actually, it was Amazon's Jeff Bezos yes, who said we're going to put true. Cortana, yep, into our Echo. <laughs> Wait a second, you what? got Cortana in my Echo, <laughs> and uh, but the I and what Bezos said in kind of response to this to your question is, well, I imagine a day you'll have you have many friends. You'll have many assistants, and you'll. I don't know if anybody wants this, but you'll talk to the assistant that's good at whatever particular thing you need. Oh, you know, that's a good point because you say the assistant's name first, right? right. So that assistant will wake up and say, Okay, I'm, yeah. I'm ready to listen to you. I don't and the want other that. Mm. Um, okay, all right. Is anybody putting any, uh, uh, any speech into uh, video receivers, audio video receivers, AVR? Well, I think we're going to see that at CDI. Wow. I, I haven't heard any specific announcements to that effect but I, I i wouldn't be at all surprised if we see that next week that's very interesting i do yeah. think voice is an important interface i think it's uh, I once you start using an echo and that's how i started two years ago yeah. you get really get used to the idea that you can ask you know questions or i mostly use it for music and, and i love talking to music in fact at this point i'm ready to sell my sonos speakers it's just so frustrating sonos is going to have an event at the same time as apple's having an event Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but speaking of the Apple event, I want to make sure you know that in addition to the iPhones uh, and may, I think a new Apple Watch maybe, yep. uh, they're also going to announce a new Apple TV. Yes. we Well, rumor, remember. Nobody, uh, it's rumor. Apple yeah, doesn't say, but there's mm -hmm. strong evidence. Very strong evidence. Yeah. And it's going to have 4K and high dynamic range. Not only high dynamic range, but all three of the main HDR formats. Uh, HDR10, oh. Dolby Vision, and HLG. Yeah, I wouldn't jump so hard on that, Scott. That's just rumor. No one knows. Well, okay. I, I mean, really I, wouldn't. I don't think that, that Apple does not pre-announce. So anybody who's asserting that is, I don't know how you would know that. Well, uh, I wrote a piece about it. Uh, 
week or so ago that uh, some a game developer, no, no, an iOS developer happened to notice some lines of code. Well, that's not in, very uh, pr probative. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, in the home, the by the way, in a device that's also not released and will be released later this year, ah! Apple's HomePod. Yeah, uh, that's so. exactly right. In the HomePod, then there were then there was a game developer who noticed that somebody was using a an Apple TV device that had a number and an I, yeah. a TVOS number that was beyond what's currently available. Yeah. Right. So you know that's these are all indications. Pretty flimsy, Scott. You oh, know what? You're new yeah. to this Apple rumor mill. Let me just tell you, <laughs> it's true though. As we get closer, that these rumors uh, uh, seem to converge on what Apple ends up announcing. But something yeah. like what technologies that apple tv supports now well let me ask you this how hard would it be to support all three hdr standards would it if you if you have a strong, hard... if you have a if you have a powerful enough processor it's the processor no so it's all it's in the, the processor. processor that's right so what may be the case is apple announced it with hdr 10 which is kind of the default and then add the add it later Right. Or maybe it will come out. It would be very nice. I mean, Apple's a little behind, so they they're need... They're quite behind. They're very behind. They're the last yeah. device not to do 4K and HDR. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. They're not the last device to do HDR, but they are the last device to do uh, 4K. Look for Sonos at CDI. I, I guess their event is oh, October... Oh, I will. Their, their event is October 4th, and that's when they're going to announce new smart speakers, which presumably will have a voice component. That's what everybody's mm -hmm. projecting. But it's a little late for Sonos... Mm -hmm. uh, Once again, I, yeah. this morning, you know, I talked to my wife. I said, I think we should sell all our Sonoses, take the mm -hmm. money and maybe buy the HomePod or buy something more modern. Because I just I feel like Sonos is not. Um, it's high quality stuff. I, I mean, well, you know, pretty good speakers. I like it when I, I hook it up to my stereo is the best effect, of course, because. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have voice. And no, in the, it doesn't. In several, over the last two years, we've just gotten used to the idea of saying and it really is great. I'm in shaving in the bathroom and saying, you know, hey, Echo, play some classic rock. And it's just nice. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, no, I agree. Yeah. We'll see a lot of that at Cedia. I'm looking forward to Cedia to, uh, to find out exactly how deep this rabbit hole goes, so to speak. Yes. So next week, uh, you'll be reporting live from Cedia. I will. Okay. Yep, I'll phone in and uh, tell you what, what's all what's going look, on at Cedia in San that. Diego. I look forward to that. Yeah. It's going to be great. And, yeah, it's uh, going to be and and of course you'll be writing about it at your uh, at your site. Oh yeah, avsforum.com. Oh, yeah. You're going to file you know, many many stories, no doubt from many CD. reports. Yeah. yeah, so be be sure to follow AVS Forum uh, over the next week. And will you do uh, your podcast from there or do some stuff from? Actually, actually I already pre-recorded it okay, yesterday. Good. Okay. Um, Twit.tv/htg. More of your calls still to come. 88, I got to say it again, 8888 ask Leo the phone number. And we put everything we talk about, including things Scott talks about on the website at techguylabs.com. That's free. Techguylabs.com. And then Sony has a, we didn't talk about it, but Sony has a HomePod very much like the HomePod that has a Google Assistant in it. You know, I didn't know that. Yeah, just announced. Oh, okay. So they'll probably right. be at Cedia. I think. Oh, Frank they will be at Cedia. We're doing a. We're actually doing an AVS forum meetup at Cedia on Saturday morning uh, with a special demo from Sony on their projectors and TVs. Looks just like the HomePod, doesn't it? Oh man, look at that! Yeah. When did they announce that? This week. Oh, okay. Yeah, yesterday, I guess. Um, well, we'll see that at Cedia, no doubt. And that's going to, what's nice is, oh, these are a bunch of speakers. What's nice is this Sony, uh, which is called the Home Spot, no, it's called the <laughs> LFSS50G. Oh, uh, <laughs> man. <laughs> oh, this was at IFA. See, the IFA has a lot of these announcements, too. Right, that's true. Yeah. The Internationale Funk Astolling Berlin. Yes, exactly. Uh, Basically, the European CES. Yeah. The LF S50G looks just like the HomePod. 199 bucks, 360 degrees sound, a clock display, a splash proof IPX3 rating, but it's not portable because you got to plug it in. Oh, comes out next month. See, I'm I I hate to say it because I'm. Do you have Sonos gear? I do. Yeah. yeah, I'm all in on Sonos, and I'm thinking, I'm maybe I should sell it before it's too late. 
<laughs> before its value drops too much well, farther. Well, it's going to drop after October 4th, right? Yeah, yeah. Unless they announce well some sort of plug-in doohickey. Yeah, a dongle. In fact, there's a there's a whole session uh, that Mike Heiss, I think, is uh, moderating a whole panel on dongles. <laughs> <laughs> um, you got a couple minutes. You want to just take it, or do you want to? Sure, sure. Okay. No, happy to. All yours. Happy to. All yours. Uh, tech in San Diego. Yes, it will be. Cedia will be at the convention center. Uh, you need to have a. It's not an open to the public kind of thing, uh, but at AVS Forum, there is a um, there is a thread in the I believe it's in the digital projectors above three thousand dollars forum. <laughs> I don't know why quite why it's there, but somebody put it there on how you can get it, how you can get a pass. So go in there and check it out if you want to go to Cedia. Uh, it's going to be quite, quite the show. Uh, Imtez uh, is asking if I've been notified to evacuate yet. No, I have not. Oh. Uh, I live in the flats. I, I don't know, Leo, uh, if you've been hearing about the Latuna fire. Yeah. Yeah, that's like I, I saw the flames north of my house. Uh, so it's it's not far from me, and the sky is dark with smoke. It's oh, amazing. Good luck. Yeah, thanks. I don't think I have anything to worry about, but I have some friends in Sunland, and they're they've got their you know important papers and what have you ready to go, in case they they get the word that it's time to evacuate. I hope it's not, but I hope that never comes. But man, oh man. It's now over 5,000 acres. It's going to be close to 100 degrees today. Ugh. Uh, I know. You, you guys have over 100 there now, right? Yeah. And there's been some, it's very smoky from some north, uh, Cal, northern California fires, but mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. nothing here yet. Yeah, good. Well, may it remain so. Yeah. Mike Heiss says Denon will have Alexa as well as LG TVs at, uh, at IFA. They showed that at IFA. <sighs> So Denon and, and LG TVs will have voice control. So how long before Sonos goes bankrupt? <laughs> Seriously. It's they're, a good they, question. They screwed the pooch. I'm yeah, very sad. Well, I don't know. I should I don't want to calculate how much I've spent, but Yeah. Yeah, probably better not to. Yeah, because we have Sonos all over the studio as well as at home. Yeah, probably, I remember when you first put it in, it was like several, you know, several everywhere. years ago. It's everywhere. Yeah. yeah. All right. You want to stick around for the top? Happy to. Thank you, sir. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. It's kind of the tech love shack. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number. We go back to the phones and Mike in Maine. Hello, Michael. How you doing, Leo? I am well. How are you? I'm doing great. You know why I never got a Juicero, by the way? <laughs> the $699 juice presser? Why? Because I'm still using my Bassomatic 76. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure you got that from Dan Aykroyd, right? <laughs> Dan Aykroyd. Bass Omatic. <laughs> yeah. The it, whole fish. It'd do anything. It'll take the whole fish. So I hope it was glad I could make you laugh on that Ooh, one. Yeah. Because I've got a really stupid question. It's uh -oh. a basic question, and I feel really ridiculous about it. But I ripped a whole bunch of CDs to my computer, which uh, worked great, and I copied them onto USB, and I use it in my car on occasion, except the car doesn't always read the USB, and because Subaru designed it so beautifully, if you need to reset the computer to pick up the USB, you've got to stop the car and yeah. start it again. So I thought it would be great to be able to put all this music on my iPhone, because it always picks up the iPhone. But I can't figure out, here I am with my iTunes opened up and the iPhone connected. I have no idea how to transfer these perfectly ripped CDs, MP3 files, into iTunes and have iTunes pick it up because iTunes theoretically is so intuitive, but I'm just not... Yeah, so there out. is an import, an import command in uh, iTunes. I think it's under the file menu. And you just point it to wherever all those CDs are and it'll import them. It will. Yeah, well, the MP3s. Yeah, it'll import them. And it's like add the file library, or yeah, well, now you can have you have several ways that it can import them. So what you go that's in the settings. I think it's an advanced option, and it's what to do with imported music. And you can leave it in place, or my recommendation: let iTunes manage the library. If you let iTunes manage the library, it'll copy it from where it is and put it in the iTunes library, just like anything else in the iTunes library, and then it'll. I'm I'm looking at the file. I have iTunes open in front of me right now, and I've got the choice of uh, 
new or add to file library there or you add go. open to library add, or add to library. Add file to library. Yeah, or what other yeah, it's something like it. I don't have an I I don't have iTunes in front of me, but it's something like that. It allows you to add all of the music into your library. But again, go into the settings first and decide whether you want to keep them where they are, keep them in their original location. Sometimes that's the case because you don't want to, you know, bloat up your hard drive. But I often put it, I like to put it in the iTunes library because then I'm backing up all my music when I back up the iTunes folder. That sounds great, except yeah. the other thing, great thing about iTunes is that it doesn't show any place where you can get to settings. <laughs> <laughs> it's under preferences. You know what? In the Mac, are you on a Mac or Windows? No, I'm I'm on Windows oh. Seven. Oh yeah, don't know how to do it on Windows Seven. On a Mac, it's Command, a comma for everything. You might yeah, try Control comma, but uh, it is under preferences, not under settings. Okay, I'll see if that's I can Apple's find it. word for settings. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and again, it's, it doesn't even show that here because Apple doesn't like to talk to. I Microsoft. think it's under. I it might be in the edit menu. I I'm just not looking at it right now, and I've kind of I've I'm blank, I'm I'm trying to blank out the whole iTunes thing. I they just Apple just announced that they're taking Eddie Q off of Siri, and I just put my hands in the air because Eddie Q. Uh, has been in charge of both Siri and iTunes, and he's done such a terrible job with both products. In my opinion, Apple has become the laggard with voice control with Siri, and iTunes, well, I shouldn't have to say this to anybody, is the worst, and yet that's what Apple gives us. That's all we've got. So let's maybe take Eddie Q off of iTunes, too. Put Craig Federighi is the guy in charge of iOS. He's a He's an oper a systems guy, and I think he'd be a better choice yeah, for both. Absolutely. Apple spends all this time coming up with new hardware, and their software just stinks. See, this, <laughs> really is why, this is why they don't invite me to their events, because I, I agree. What's wrong with you, Apple? It's really crazy. Hey, and I have one other solution for you, Leo, that yes. might be able to help you out just in general. Please. If you're having all this trouble with your Sonos speakers and you're going to convert that it, all out, yeah. you, you, can just, you can just give those to me. And <laughs> uh, they're on their way, Mike. I have spent, I don't really want to think about it because they're very expensive. I think the, the Play 5s, I think, are 600 bucks. I think. And in many rooms, I have stereo. My kitchen has two Play 5s. That's 1200 bucks. My bedroom has two Play 5s. That's 2400 bucks now. I've got a Sonos in the bathroom. I've got a Sonos in the laundry room. I've got a Sonos in my office. I can go on and on. I've probably spent $10,000, which is well, ridiculous. It was only a couple of years ago when you got them and you were raving about them. It wasn't. I've had, I've, I, were, yeah, so. it's been more than that, I think. But uh, yeah, I, I've always loved them. But what happened, and they were always great, but what happened is the world passed them by. They were the best way to get kind of internet radio on your home stereo f for years. They were the only way for years. Uh, but the world passed them by, particularly with with Echo. And you know they they replaced their CEO about a year and a half ago. And I think because they they knew they missed the boat on voice, and now it's going to be too little, too late when they they're having their event October fourth. I, I you know we already seen the FCC filing. They're going to announce a speaker with a microphones in it. But that means I have to buy new speakers. That's not going to be a solution. Yeah, you would think that they would make something so you could, you know, backtrack and connect the current speakers that you're working with. And I don't want to say any of the magic names, but you should be able to connect those to your current They system. announced they were going to do that a year ago. They said, oh, by early 2017, we'll have a way to use Echo with Sonos. And they never did it. And it's, uh, I, I feel bad. I, it's sad. It's sad. It's because uh, it was a great company, but it's, and they're in beautiful Santa Barbara. So I'm waving at them, but uh, they, they kind of lost the thread i think of the conversation they were too small probably they made a great product but um, technology is a funny thing it moves faster than most companies are even aware of than we're aware of you know we're like the frog in the you know that old story if you put a frog in a you know pan of cold water and you turn on the heat the and slowly heat the water up the frog won't jump out because it doesn't notice until it's too late that it's been boiled I think many many companies in this world are, are are kind of, you know, not noticing how rapidly change is happening around them. And Sonos might have thought, well, we're not a technology company; we're a speaker company. Well, that was kind of a mistake. They kind of missed they missed out. It's a shame. It's a shame. I I don't feel too bad because uh, people who bought they were so expensive that the only people who bought Sonos were people crazy crazy people like me. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Next, we're going to Twin Peaks. I need, wish I had the Twin Peaks theme for Myrna. Hi, Myrna. 
Hi, Myrna. Okay. No, you're Myrna. I'm Lino. I got Wait it. Wait a minute. Right now. <laughs> Hi, Myrna. That's because I talked to you a week or so ago about Facebook forcing me to scan with yes. Scan Micro. Yes. Did you ever find out more about that? Oh, did I ever. And you're going to get blown away by this. Okay. I have been an ESET customer, oh, maybe 10 years, 15 years. They were an advertiser. Be probably because uh, of me. I recommended I them. Yep. I know. Wait till you hear the story. They did it to me yesterday, only this time they forced me to do an ESET scan on top of ESET on my computer. Yeah. And I was locked out of Facebook for an hour and a half while the scan ran. Yeah. And all notifications indicated what they'd be doing. Did they find anything? No. So Facebook think, and by the way, we I've done some research as well. Facebook does do this. They think you have uh, malware, and they're trying to protect their own network and your friends, but they aren't finding anything. This is one of the reasons I no longer recommend antiviruses. It's called false positives. Let me talk to you off the air. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Uh, Myrna, I, uh, I, I feel like this is, um, I worry that there's something there that they keep to saying, it's, but you're right. They said nothing, right? They, they said, said absolutely nothing either time. And, but it's still happening. Well, he said yesterday, trend micro a week or two ago. Yeah. Facebook uses both of those. Uh, and those, the reason is those are online scans. You actually have something better with the installed ESET. And if the installed ESET's not finding anything... It's a little frustrating because Facebook continues to think you've got something going on. I don't know if that's from the way you're posting or the kind of posts. Oh, you're I'm putting. kind of a target. I'm conservative. Yeah. I don't know why it's coming up all that much uh, because it doesn't sound like you have anything. And, and by the way, and I hope you got, I sent you a message. I hope you got the reassurance that this is, as I found out, something Facebook does do from time to time. Yes. Oh, I've got people telling me this. I've got a scam and I fell for it. And how stupid! Yeah, no, I don't think you did get scammed. I think this I is didn't. no. I think this is le well legit. I mean, it's Facebook, but it is frustrating. I don't blame you. Well, I have a case complaint in with ESET because if their product is being used, no, it's not. It's just that Facebook. So you bought ESET. That's separate from what Facebook's sending you to. As you know, it's an online scan, and that's why Facebook sends you to antivirus.com, Trend Micro's anti -scan, antivirus scan, because you don't have to install anything. They don't want you to install anything, and you shouldn't. If, if a website says install something, you shouldn't do it. No, I, it, it's downloading the scan. Well, no, it's not downloading. It just runs it. It's an online scan, but it's not as effective. I... I think I just agree with that. You think you're getting something on there, huh? I think I'm. my whole computer is being scanned. Yes, that's what it does. But it does it online. It does it from mm. an online scanner. Somebody it, would have to show me proof of that because I. How would, not, how would Facebook put it in notifications then, what they were doing and what they would do next? Well, it's running. I mean, it's, uh, it's because Facebook's running. Um, it's not downloading it, uh, to my knowledge, unless you have something that's other than what I think you've got, which is... The, I think the, I saw the word download. Oh. Uh, well, you don't want to download something. That. You already have an antivirus. You shouldn't no, put another it, antivirus on it. Let me go on. I went on to other computers and tried to log in as me onto Facebook, and I was locked out completely until the scan was finished. Yeah, they won't let you use it. That's part of what they do. I don't know what to say about this, except that you need to... And it's hard to get any response out of Facebook, but they need to stop doing this to you. I, that's all I can all I can say. Hey, I have to run because Scott's here and he has to do his his magic. He's doing his <laughs> magic. So let me let, let Scott take it for a <clears throat> few minutes. Thank you. Take a break. Take a break. A bio break. Uh, yes, uh, Himtez uh, has been uh, wishing me well in the fire, and I thank you very much for that. I guess you're in uh, East L.A., and the ash is falling there. I haven't even been outside yet, but I think the ash is probably going to be covering my car. Um, somebody in the chat room here, I can't remember who it was, uh, mentioned that uh, Sharp announced an 8K TV at IFA which is the show Leo and I were talking about there in um, in Germany, in Berlin. And 
uh, okay, they announced an 8K TV. They've been showing 8K TVs for years, years and years. And now I guess maybe they've finally announced an actual product. Apparently, it's only going to be available, at least at first, in China and Japan. Uh, and there's no 8K content. You know, now that we're just starting to settle down into 4K, uh, Sharp is uh, disrupting the Apple card again and going for 8K. And everyone's going, oh, no, what do I do? Don't worry about it. Uh, they are planning to broadcast the 2020 Olympics from Tokyo in 8K, but I don't know whether that's going to be in the United States. I would tend to think not. Uh, we'll barely have ATSC 3.0 over the air up and running by then. Uh, Mike Heiss uh, in the chat room, uh, you're also doing, a, I think, a panel on, on uh, ATSC 3.0. Uh, what do you think? Is it going to be up and running in two years' time? Uh, it could be, but it'll be just. Uh, I think Korea is planning to broadcast uh, the Seoul games in 2018 in, in, in 8K, but that'll probably only be in Korea. Um, so, And whether or not these Sharp TVs will be available to buy in Korea by then, I don't know. I don't know. But it's... Uh, you know, I, I have to say I'm a little disappointed if, if Sharp is bringing out 8K and, oh, look, we now we've got 8K. Uh, yeah, okay, they need to come up with new stuff. All manufacturers need to come up with new stuff all the time. Um, but that's, that's a little much, if you ask me. Um, ooh, Mike Man says his porch in Glendale is covered in ash. I bet your mine is too. I haven't even looked outside yet. Uh, okay. Yes, Mike, uh, Mike Heiss, I wouldn't hold my breath for 8K in the U.S. Exactly. Who has the bandwidth for 8K? Well, in, in terms of streaming, yeah, exactly. For 4K, you, you need like 25 megabits at least of solid bandwidth, not just maximum that might get disrupted by somebody else on your network, but, you know, solid, reliable 15 to 25 megabits, 8K is, uh, you know, probably going to be at least 50, and that's with high compression. So, uh, you know, I don't think that's going to be anywhere anytime soon. Uh, Swiftbird Zero 2016 versus 2017 prices. I don't know what you mean. If you would be a little more specific, I might be able to answer you. Um, Synapse, I want 32K. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. The Gun, the One, uh, LG OLED extended warranty. I rarely get extended warranties, rarely, especially with consumer electronics, because if electronics are going to fail, they're going to fail early. They're going to fail well within the standard warranty period. And if they don't fail within the standard warranty period, they're really not going to, they're probably, I can't guarantee, but probably not going to fail uh, in the long term. I mean, eventually they will, but uh, that's been my experience and my philosophy for a very long time. So that's my opinion. Uh Let's see, Web 3458, any suggestions for an OTA tuner for a flat panel monitor have a 4K that doesn't have a tuner? Well, you're not going to get any OTA 4K until ATSC 3.0 is deployed. And that's not going to be, I'd say, for another year at least. Uh, so there's no, there's no product to buy in that case. There are OTA tuners um, for ATSC 1.0, which is what we have now, and that's HD. Uh, and your 4K monitor will scale it up to 4K. So, uh, and uh, I haven't looked at OTA tuners, uh, standalone OTA tuners, in a really long time. So I'm not sure I know. I know of any that I can recommend. Mike Heiss might, if uh, ah, in fact, he just did get the Channel Master DVR Plus. I was gonna. I, I just had thought of Channel Master as as I read that uh, because. Uh, they do, they they make a DVR, an o, OTA, over-the-air uh, DVR, and uh, you, so Donnie. that that's good. Uh, thanks. I'll talk to you next week All in right. San Diego. Good luck. Crossing my fingers thanks. for you. Right. Thank you. Well, hey, hey, hey. How are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk about tech, computers, the internet, home theater, 
digital photography, smartphones, smart watches. 8888 Ask Leo. That's my uh, phone number if you have a question, a comment, a suggestion. If you'd like to talk high tech with me, 888 827 5536. That's toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. The website, if you hear something on the air and you say, oh, I like that, you don't have to write that down. You just uh, just need to remember this, techguylabs.com, techguylabs.com. And uh, that's uh, free, and it's open to anybody, and it's got all the, uh, all the show notes, questions, answers. We put audio and video of the shows up there after the fact. Uh, and you can comment, too. In fact, I uh, appreciate anything you can add to the conversation. Even, no, Leo, you're wrong. This is what needs to happen. That's techguylabs.com. Calm. And I thank you for, in advance for your help making that a useful place. Bruce, Carlsbad, California is next. Hi, Bruce Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Uh, former caller there talking about uh, the Apple and the iTunes and the yes. difficulty, difficulty of use. Boy, does that ever ring a bell, huh? Um, not. To, I, I had to go through making up an entire uh, office file just to to do it, and Apple's supposed to be so. so you're, great. you're you're breaking up. I don't know if you're getting far away from your phone base, or you. I don't know what's going on, but I can hardly make out what you're uh, saying. Okay, is this better? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I, um, like down here in San Diego, where they had that morning tech show, and uh, they've talked about. One guy always says, if it has an Apple logo on it people will buy it regardless uh, even if it's a even if it's a brick yeah I, I bet he doesn't get invited to any of the apple events either <laughs> probably not <laughs> but, i mean look, look at look at just your plain old uh, flash drive and you plug it into the side of your computer and you can uh take uh files music files from it and and put it on the computer and vice versa and why is it that when you plug your apple in that it doesn't do the same thing. Well, that I don't blame Apple for entirely. That's a music industry thing. Uh, Apple was deadly afraid when, it, uh, or the music industry was deadly afraid when Apple came out with the iPod that it would be used as a mass piracy device. I mean, imagine, you know, you've got a thousand songs in your pocket, but you can also bring those thousand songs to your buddy and he can copy them onto his computer. So they made Apple, they said, Apple, you can't make it, so you just plug it in and you see the songs and you can copy them off. Gotcha. They didn't yeah, make it impossible, by the way. Apple just made it kind of non obvious. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, the, the nature of the call, uh, it, I, uh, I have, uh, as you know, Vista is no longer supported, and uh, uh, I have Windows Vista, and I'm, I'm not uh, bothered by that. I've had to do clean installs of, of Vista, um, and I have the, uh, the Dell uh, 1720, and it's, a, uh, it's 10 years old, and it's a, a great computer, but... Uh, uh, it was junk when I bought it because of, <laughs> well, when wait a it, minute, it got better over time. Oh yeah, well, it was only the first week. It was a total piece of junk because oh. whatever you do, it was it was Vista and Google um, and Windows all fighting for oh, control. Yeah. So if I you know I started so, uh, with Windows ten, I uh, I was having such trouble with Chrome. I started using Edge, and anytime I go to a Google site now, it says, "Are you sure you don't want to use Chrome?" And it's like. I'm sure. Knock it off. Okay, there you go. Hence, uh, I don't want. Uh, I'm going to do a reinstall, and I don't want to use the uh, the disc that came with it from Dell. I'm I'm going to do a uh, just a proprietary disc from uh, for Windows Vista, and I'm wondering about the partitions. You know the. the from yeah. Dell, you have your C drive, and then you yeah. have a D for recovery. So, the, yeah, the, 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 the rec are you going to install Windows Vista again? Yes, it is Vista. Okay. And yeah, but you have a Microsoft disk this time? Uh, yes, a just a regular old proprietary disk. Yeah, as long as you have uh, the Windows disk, keep it around. The reason they put a recovery disk on there is because they don't give you any disks. So uh, all the manufacturers, by the way, they're still doing this. In fact, it's part of Windows 10 now. It's It's been... You know, Microsoft likes it so much because they're so worried about piracy. It's interesting that everything we've talked about so far is because of people worried about piracy. By the way, it doesn't stop piracy, as you may have noticed. The pirates are sophisticated enough to get around all this stuff. It only stops normal users from having a good experience. 
So nice job. Uh, so they're so worried about that that they, they that Microsoft wants you to kind of either make your own recovery material. And now in Windows 10, they just put that partition on there. But you don't need that partition. Uh, okay. What I, I think you could just wipe the drive and start completely from scratch. Let Windows do its thing. It will uh, create it all in one C drive. Uh, what you could, what you probably do want to... you still get System Restore if it doesn't have that recovery. You'll get, you'll get the, uh, the you know, if you use the set points, you'll get it. But you don't have the restore, the full restore. But I don't think you ever did, frankly, in Windows Vista that, that would let you start over. You'd need the disk, so keep that disk handy. You can't restore from a partition on your hard drive anymore. You have to use it from the disk. But okay, yeah. and, and you specifically that keep the disk handy. Are we yeah. talking about this generic disk? Yeah, connection? this well, generic. It's it's got the Microsoft Windows hologram on it, right? It's legitimate, right? Oh, it absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay. It's not the Dell. It's not. No, the no, Dell. it doesn't matter. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to install Windows from that disk, uh, and you're going to keep that disk around. If you ever have trouble with Windows and you want to restore it, you boot to the disk. And you run the recovery routines from that DVD or CD. Oh, so that will be on it then. So that is a yeah, that is a recovery disc, and that's the reason oh. why you need to keep it. Now, great, that's great. That's there is the you may disc. you may need some Dell drivers. You may not because remember, Dell is a big supplier. So uh, the first thing that'll happen when you install Vista is they'll go out and say, "I want to do some updates." Remember, you're not getting security patches anymore with Vista. Right, that's great. Okay, so you just understand that you're running. You're uh, running absolutely. All right. Okay, <laughs> but it will. So I'd be careful going online with it. But anyway, you will uh, be able to get some updates, including driver updates. But you might also want to go to Dell's site and get their proprietary hardware drivers for their specific hardware. I'm betting that Windows already has it. You know, Windows comes with a huge set of drivers, including drivers from manufacturers. It probably has all the Dell drivers, but if Vista doesn't. Uh, Dell will, including the motherboard driver, uh, that usually takes care of sound, video, and networking. If you have a, a dedicated video card or a dedicated sound card, you'll need drivers for those. Dell, if Dell sold you everything, they will have drivers for it. Uh, if you added third-party cards after the fact, you'll want to go out and uh, you know go to Sound Blaster, go to Creative Labs, wherever you got those drivers. I wish I could talk you out of sticking around on Windows 7, be, or rather Vista, because because it's out of date, just like Windows XP was a year ago, now Vista is. You, Microsoft says, we're not going to fix it anymore. So if anything's discovered, you're out of luck. Now, I do have to point out that these systems have been so heavily patched over time that I don't think there have been a lot of issues. There, you know, well, there, well, there's some. Uh, remember the WannaCry virus that used a flaw in Windows networking and what we call SMB. And uh, you'll be using the same version of SMB unpatched, so you'll be kind of wide open. But but this, it took advantage of this to spread to other systems in your network. So maybe maybe you don't care. I just I understand why you want to stay with it. I just want to make sure that you really understand the risks of using an out-of-date operating system. Because, because you're not getting patches, any security flaws that bad guys discover will remain open and you will remain vulnerable forever. Forever. And uh, if you do a clean install from that disk, I don't... What happens? Uh, actually, this is a big question mark. Do you do, will you get at least you know uh, uh, up to the last update Microsoft sent out, or do they turn those servers off? Anybody know that? I'm guessing you're going to get all the service packs and everything you'll get up to date to the last minute. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Yeah, Linux would be so much better. Our show today brought to you by my good friends at Rocket Mortgage. Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Quicken Loans, of course, the best mortgage lender in the country. I say that, of course, as if everybody knows that. I certainly know it. They're the number two lender in the country. The number one lender, you, you don't want to do business with, trust me. I'm not going to name names. Just tell them. Just trust me. You don't. But Quicken Loans, these guys are great. If you go to rocketmortgage.com slash tech guy, you can... Verify this for yourself by seeing all those J.D. Power customer service awards year after year after year. Number one 
in uh, customer satisfaction for mortgage origination and mortgage servicing. Rocketmortgage.com slash tech guy is the website. Rocketmortgage.com slash. Now, I know you're not probably buying a house right this minute. So bookmark this guy, okay? Bookmark this. You'll see seven consecutive years, number one in customer satisfaction. Four consecutive years, number one in mortgage servicing. That's Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Go to rocketmortgage.com slash tech guy. For a refi or a new home, you find out, first of all, it's all entirely online, which I love because I'm a geek. I don't want to do any, I don't want to go to a mortgage officer or a bank and ask for money. I don't, I don't want to have to go through the attic and go through all the paperwork to get the financial records. I just want to go and do it all online. And you can with Rocket Mortgage because of their trusted partnerships with all the big financial institutions. They know everything they need to know about you. You can give them permission, of course, to access things like your bank statements or your pay stubs. And then based on your income, your assets, and your credit, they chomp it all. They'll analyze all the home loan options for which you qualify, and then they'll find the one that's just right for you. It's fully transparent. You know exactly what's going on from beginning to end. It's completely simple. You can do it from your phone. You can do it at an open house. That's why I want you to bookmark it now so you'll have it. When you're at that open house tomorrow and you go, oh, let's buy this house, then you'll know. You go, didn't Leo... What did he say? Oh, yeah, rocketmortgage.com slash tech guy. Equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org, number 3030. Rocketmortgage.com slash tech guy from Quicken Loans. It's completely online. It's easy. Apply simply, understand fully, and mortgage confidently with Rocket Mortgage. Rocketmortgage.com slash tech guy. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888-ASK-LEO. Somebody in the chat room said, can you tell me why it's bad to use old versions of Windows like Windows XP and Vista? Yeah, I can tell you why. So, uh, <laughs> I really, uh, our last caller wanted to know if he could reinstall Vista. And, I, you know, I, I helped him because, I, you know, I want to tell you what I know. But, boy, I strongly recommend uh, not using an out-of-date operating system. Microsoft has a... And I think a fairly reasonable policy over time of, of discontinuing operating systems. I think after 10 years, something like that, they say, look, you know, you can keep using it, but you should know we're not going to support it anymore. And more, most importantly, we're not going to support it with fixes. Every Humans are fallible. There is no perfect human. And since software is an incredibly complex thing made by humans, particularly an operating system with hundreds of millions of lines of code, it is even more fallible. It is even more likely to have flaws. There has not been a program written yet that doesn't have some flaws. Uh, in fact, the U.S. military and NASA have spent a lot of time and energy to create uh, ways of assuring that a program is perfect. And even those programs aren't perfect. They're perfect enough to send a man to the moon and get him back safely. But they're not. They're not maybe completely perfect, but that standard is a much higher standard than Microsoft or Apple or IBM or anybody uh, puts towards its operating systems. It's just impractical to say, no, we're done. This is perfect. There will never be a problem. It just doesn't happen. So over time, usually at least monthly, uh, these companies will send out patches, fixes, changes to the operating system that you apply that fix a problem. Sometimes the problem is that the operating system crashes or is unreliable. Often, though, if you can get a program to crash or be unreliable, the next step is you can weaponize that flaw. And hackers spend a lot of energy and time doing this. Weaponize that flaw. Make it useful so that you can take over a computer. That's the ultimate goal of any bad guy, is to get that computer to do something he wants, not something you want, whether it's send spam, or more more commonly these days, attack other computer systems, or most commonly, scramble your system and ask you for money, saying, if you ever want to see your data again, you'll send us some money. That's the most common these days. That's malware. That's software that you get on your system, and it, and it does bad things to your system. You can prevent malware to some degree by being uh, careful. 
And we certainly talk a lot about that. And I don't mean by running an antivirus. That, not, that isn't really the most effective way to prevent malware. Just being careful about where you get files, what programs you install. You don't open email attachments. Please do not. Don't click links in email. Don't click links in messaging. You say, but Leo, but that's what I do on my computer. Well, don't. Type it in by hand if you have to. Uh, clicking links is very dangerous. Generally, uh, bad guys will try to get you to run a program of theirs, trick you into it. There are all sorts of ways to do it. You know, send you a file saying, "You look at this video. You won't believe what I saw." Or you know, here I've got some great pictures that you're going to love of your favorite celebrity. Whatever, get you to open a file and by doing so infect you. But if you're careful and you don't open attachments, that's not going to work for them. Unfortunately, these flaws in operating systems can let them in even without your doing anything. And that's what's really scary. You can be all the careful in the world, but if your operating system has a hole in it, a place where a bad guy can get in, then he can get in. Because you're on, if you're on the Internet, he can use it and get in. We've seen so, I mean, everything has flaws, as I said, and bad guys are always working hard to use those flaws to get into your system whether it's to put malware on it or what. put A lot of times, we've probably all experienced this, it's just to put an ad up on your screen, a pop-up, or maybe a pop-up that says, oh, you've got malware, you should call us. This is, this is Windows. <laughs> you should call us because we can fix it. By the way, don't fall for that. That's another way to get something on your system. So Microsoft's, everybody, Adobe, Apple, they're always fixing Fixing, fixing, fixing. And it is true that over time, Windows XP and Windows Vista and Windows 7 got more and more reliable to the point where there weren't a lot of flaws. But they're pretty reliable because they'd fixed them all. You know, everything they could find, and bad guys didn't find more. Bad guys also move on after a while. You know, uh, there's a lot of XP and Vista machines out there still. And bad guys know they're not getting fixed. So if they really want a computer, the problem is they're older computers. They're maybe not that interested in them, maybe... You know, they're not business computers. To, but for whatever reason, I think bad guys kind of tend to work on more modern versions of the operating system. Nevertheless, there have been flaws in Vista and XP. If you're using Vista or XP and you're going online, you're going online kind of, it's not, it's not prudent. It's not cautious. You're going online with a system that potentially is exploitable without your doing anything. You just go to a website and it can take over your system. Maybe you say, well, I don't care if I get malware because there's nothing on this computer I don't need. I need, I can just, I can, that's fine. I'll just erase it and start over. Yeah. But it also, they also can use it to do bad things to other people on the internet. You don't want to be party to that. So I, uh, look, you spend a lot of money on that computer and the operating system and you know it and it works and all the stuff you want to do works. Although I have to think after a while because. It's not just Microsoft that stops supporting Vista. Everybody else stops supporting Vista. And after a while, your programs aren't even going to work very well. You certainly can't run newer programs, newer browsers. You can't use a latest version of Chrome on XP or Firefox. You'll be using uh, on either XP or Vista uh, such an old version of Internet Explorer. That by itself is a major security flaw, major security hazard. The good news is you can use that old hardware and you can either put Windows 10 or 7 on it at some expense, or you can get a free version of Linux and use that. And Linux is, you know, if you go to get, you know, Ubuntu, U-B-U-N-T-U, for instance, one of the one of the best Linux, especially for people who are new to it, and download it. It's free. You can install it. It'll do, you know, pretty much everything your Windows will do. It can even run some Windows programs, although this is, takes a little more effort using Wine. But, but it has its own browsers. It has Chrome. It has Firefox. It has its, and they're up to date. It, ha, it, it is being kept up to date. It's an army of volunteers are keeping these Linux programs up to date. And in general, I think they are more secure. I'd certainly, if you, if you said, well, I, I, which is more secure, uh, Ubuntu Linux or Windows XP? I'd say get Ubuntu Linux. It's much more secure. Or maybe look at a Chromebook. Maybe get a new computer and get a Chromebook that is a super secure system and has always been kept up to date. But just remember, a 10-year-old computer, not only is it slow and old and prone to, to failure, its operating system is out of date as well. And that means you're very vulnerable to bad guys. 
And so I just, I, I, I feel bad. It's not like a classic car. <laughs> Although you could make a case those are a little dangerous too without airbags and any lock brake systems. But that's, a, that's for another show, not this one. It is, it is really just an, an old piece of software on old hardware. And, and it's dangerous to use both for you and the internet at large. So if I, if I can make a plea, maybe think about something a little newer. Something that's currently being supported and updated. 8888 Ask Leo. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. More of your calls right after this. This is, this here is uh, Ubuntu. No, this is uh, Debian, which is a Linux operating system. Kind of looks, if I, if I uh, pull away the lower third, you can see it. There's the dock. So I, that's, this is, you can use all different kinds of user interface devices. This is using a GNOME desktop, which I like, GNOME 3.0. And this is a, GNOME extension called Dash to Dock, which um, is really easy to use. You also have menus up here, just kind of like Windows. Well, this is Mac, but if you want, you could have this on the bottom. You can both the plus and the negative of, of Linux is you can make it any way you want. But Ubuntu out of the box will be very easy to use. You don't have to make any configurations. Over time, you may say, Oh, I want to. It has a full Office suite, which is free. This is called LibreOffice. Um, I have some damaged files, but this is LibreOffice. You can create a spreadsheet, and and it's it's very compatible and 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 like Microsoft Office. It's kind of like an older version, maybe. It doesn't have the ribbon, but it's but you it's for most people do everything you want. I use Chrome, the Chrome browser. There's Chrome. You know, and I can go to a website, and it looks just like it does on your Windows PC, but it's more secure. The other thing that's, uh, you know, cool is you can update it. So there's a Ubuntu, and this is Debian, but Ubuntu is based on Debian. Ubuntu will be a little bit maybe uh, slicker. But I can go to the, um, the updaters, the software updaters. I can install packages. Oh, and it wants my password. See, it's very secure. It wants my administrator password before it'll let me do that. Oh, and it wants me to type it correctly. Huh? Is my caps lock on? Oh. It's giving it the wrong password. Uh, so this is, uh, this is a software updater, but you can... Also, install stuff. Here's amateur radio, communications, databases. There's a huge amount of free software. Almost all of this is free. You can install. Uh, Ubuntu has a, ver has a prettier software store that looks really pretty much like any commercial operating system. I think you probably could use this as a novice without too much trouble. Ubuntu especially without too much trouble. He's Johnny Jet, and he's been all over the place. He joins us each week on The Tech Guy to talk about traveling like a movie star with the help of technology. Hello, Johnny Jet. Hello, Leo. How you doing? I am great. I see you're home still. That's nice. I am home. I think I was away. Actually, I don't remember. No, you were home last week, too. Two weeks well, in a I, row. No, I, was, I went away last week. I was in North Carolina. Oh, but Just I think for two days. That was, yeah. Okay, well, I only care about this show. <laughs> I'm going away next week. I'll be, well, you I'll be do in a different between. destination next week. <laughs> oh, well, you won't tell us, will you? I will not no. tell you. All right, well, where where should we go on the Internet to travel better? All right, so I got a great site for you. I really think you'll like this one. So if you if you travel in or if you're at home, but you want to try that exotic car that you that you've always dreamt of, or even better yet, one of the, your first car that you ever owned Ooh. that you know you, you can't get anymore, Ooh. or a hot rod, Ooh. or an antique, or a classic truck. So yes. check out this site, driveshare.com. I just put it in the show notes. I just tweeted it out. Yep. Um, so it's called driveshare.com. Yeah. And so you're renting it from regular owners, and usually it's for a day or two. And prices vary depending on, you know, what the car you want. But I was just looking for L.A. where I live. You can get a 1964 Ford Mustang for $225 Was that your day. high school car? No, my first car was a uh, Volkswagen Rabbit. Oh, cute. 
And yeah, then, so um, this is but you fun. can also get a I, Lamborghini. I don't really want to own a classic car, but it'd be fun to drive it. Yeah. So yeah. one of the cool cars, if you put in LA, wow. you can get nineteen hundred dollars for the Lamborghini Huracan. It's uh, twenty sixteen. Wow. But wow. you can get in LA at least. You can get a nineteen eighty nine Knight Industries kit car, like the one on the TV <laughs> show, and that only goes for one hundred and seventy four dollars a day. And it's and, this, and they say it's just like the real one. It talks. It, it has talks? a scanner light. Wow. Yeah. Or you can get a 1981 DeLorean for $800 See, a day in L.A. that would be fun to drive a DeLorean. That would be amazing. You want to make a big entrance, you know, you're going to your uh, your movie pitch meeting, drive up in a DeLorean. Actually, that's a great idea. I'm going to my high school reunion oh, uh, in, perfect. A, in a month. Perfect. I might just show up in a, in a DeLorean. No, Lamborghini. <laughs> well, it depends. You're married. You don't need to impress anybody. So maybe the... Maybe the maybe the DeLorean would be fun. How fun is that? So these are these are uh, f rentals from people who own them. Did right. what do they do about insurance? Are you on the so hook can, if you if you no? They include it. So they have um, they have an auto insurance policy that com covers provides liability coverage oh. for bodily injury and property damage for the rental period. Oh, I want a 1951 Ford Country Squire, a Woody. So did you Look put in that. your where you live? Did you put in Petaluma or San Francisco? Oh, you probably I should. Probably get huh? more. I should put the location, huh? Well, I just... did put I put it in Petaluma, and there were some, but I think it's mostly San Francisco. I mean, you're going to get it in the bigger cities, obviously. Well, you know, this uh, is uh, we we call uh, this is where uh, George Lucas shot American Graffiti. This we call this uh, car country out here. There are a lot of classic car shows and stuff, but probably those guys don't let you drive their car. Exactly. <laughs> those guys those guys don't care about making a few extra dollars or sharing the no, love. No, they're not going to let you go near it. They won't let you they won't let you breathe on it if you go to one of those car shows. No. How I fun. Mean, so you can choose from automatic or manual. You can choose the features you want and then choose the yep. location. I guess it wouldn't make sense to rent something that's not near you, would it? Uh, you, well, if you're traveling, yeah. So but that's, I mean, that's where you're going to be. So I mean, I'm sure. not going to rent. Yeah. I like this country squire, but it's in Dallas. So it's not going to be much help to me. Well, I mean, if you really wanted to drive this one car, yeah. so that it might be worth the trip out there. And oh, I guess. By you're the way, right. I, I find tickets to Dallas for so cheap, especially from LA. You can sometimes oh. fly or New York City, ninety eight dollars round trip sometimes. Yeah, because those are hub cities, right? Yeah. Right. Well, actually, the hub cities, they have they, the reason why they, they, they're cheap fares is because they have a lot of um, competition. For example, uh, of Charlotte's a hub city for American, but L.A. to Charlotte is ridiculous. It's five hundred and fifty dollars one way. Wow. Even in advance. Wow. But if you put in Charlotte, L.A. to Richmond, Virginia or LaGuardia and it stops in Charlotte, all of a sudden it drops down to one hundred and eighty dollars or sixty dollars. Did you see that the new CEO of Uber is the guy who turned yes. Expedia around? Yes, I've met him a few times. Dara a nice guy. Shashi. Yeah, Shashawari? I think that was a good. I think that was a good pick. I think. I think so. Job. He's, uh, you know, he is. Uh, he took Expedia, which was struggling, and instead of just painting, you know, slapping a coat of fresh paint on it. Really rebuilt the company. I didn't know this, but uh, Expedia was a wholesaler. They would buy the rooms from the hotel and then resell them. And he moved to right. the agency model, which is what I assumed that they were doing, like a travel agent does, where they get a cut of the booking. But uh, he changed, and he had to change the whole business model and everything for Expedia, but turned that company around. So I think he has the experience uh, that it's going to take to make Uber. Uh, I do. I hope so, because I love Uber. And, and like, you know, the, the party, like Expedia and those guys don't make money from air. I mean, they make very little if they make any. Right. They're making their money from hotels and package deals and right. cruises and right. things like that. That's where the money is. Oh, interesting. But, um, so I got another site for you if you got yes, time. Yes, I do. All right. So I actually put it in the show notes. This is a little bit longer URL and I also tweeted it. Smokymountains.com backslash fall hyphen foliage at hyphen map. Is this the time so, to go see the foliage in, uh, in well, the Smokies? Well, it's actually not about the Smoky Mountains at all. I'm not even going to mention them except the URL. Oh. But they have a prediction. <laughs> they have a, a, a prediction oh, map for fall foliage right. across the whole United States. So oh. you can you can slide the little slider at the bottom, the See, date like, you're going to be traveling. Now is not the time to go. Everything's green. But let's right. say if you leave September 17th. Oh, if you're going to Vermont or Maine, you're going to see some beautiful. The peak 
is hitting in northern Vermont and New Hampshire but, on the 17th, just two weeks But keep now. in mind, this is not 100% accurate. No, no tool is. But it gives you kind of a good idea if you're planning your travel and you want to see some fall foliage. What a great idea. It is a great idea. Although I'm not 100% sure it's accurate because I put in uh, October 8th and yeah. it said Connecticut was past its peak. And I don't I don't remember Connecticut being past its peak uh, so early. I think it's no more normally end of October. Well, you would know being a Connecticut boy. Well, I, you know, I don't really. It pay depends on when the when the first frost is and things like that, right? So they can't predict when the frost is going to be. No, it'll but get it, more it gives accurate. You an idea. Get closer. Yeah, it gives you an idea to plan. And you know what's really popular are fall foliage cruises. So you can do New England and then they go into Canada. Nice. So that's a good idea. And say if you're it, go to say Canada, it with make me, sure you John. Do that early foliage. Foliage. No, Thank foy. You. It's foli. Fol. A lot of people say fo foliage. Foliage. Just okay. like it's spelled, but nobody looks at the spelling. <laughs> yeah, it's Thank a you. very. I don't know why, but it, a lot of people say foliage. Well, I it's, appreciate you correcting. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't. I just. I want you to. It's be, okay. Listen. Hey. I want you to be I'm, right. I need it, and I don't want to be teaching. Um, yeah, because Jack's got to say it right. I don't want to mispronounce it. Really no, exactly. Jack's got to say it right. F O L I A G E. Foliage. <laughs> you know, I'm so a trained you, professional, so I, anytime that's you why have I, a question. <laughs> hey, I'm not just a guest. I'm a, I'm a client. Now. I, I'm yeah, less. I ruined Dara's name, though, so I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't think I should be trusted uh, for that. Oh, Dara you know, Kosro, Ko, Kosro Shahi. Kosro Shahi. Yeah, I think he's Iranian. Ka, Kosro okay. Shahi. I practiced it a million times. Did you say you thought he was a Uranium? I th you, no, I, I think he's from Iran. <laughs> Iran. You know what? People, when they're from Iran and they don't want to say they're from Iran, they say they're Persian. Right. Yeah, he's Persian. There's a lot of Persians in LA. Yes. I love Persians. I mean, oh, every, everyone I've spoken to who's been to people. Iran said yeah. they love it there. Yeah. It's sad that that's become such a war zone. It's too bad. Uh, uh, actually, okay. There's still parts of Iran you can go to. No problem. Did you have a, uh, was that it? Your two sites? That's it, but Are I do have done? a tip. So I know you're, I know you're traveling Quick tip. soon. Yes. So I know you like to shop when you travel. So one of the things, I don't know if I mentioned this a long time ago, but bring some plastic wrap, bubble wrap. Bubble wrap. Bring bubble because wrap. It's, it's hard to find when you're traveling. You know, somebody's making great. a bubble wrap that doesn't pop. I think that's sacrilege. Sacrilege. Johnny Jet. You'll find him at johnnyjet.com. I'm Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888 Ask Leo, the phone number. Uh, Jennifer's on the line from Norco, California. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. Thanks for hanging on. What can I do for you? Well, I'm an old lady, and I just moved here, and I don't want to pay for cable. I don't blame you. So, um, and I, I, I bought an antenna. Good. Um, an internal, because I can't install one on the outside right and i don't get channels uh abc and i don't get is there any way to get things like fox news on an right. antenna no because that's a cable only channel so for that you're going to need either a subscription and, or in some cases not all and i don't know about fox news i think uh not on fox news but you can get other news channels on the internet news is one of those things that it's hard to get on the internet do you have internet service where you are Yes, I do. Okay. So that might be a way to get uh, uh, at least some information. For, let me just see if Fox News, if they have a... We call it, when you put uh, TV on the internet, we call that streaming. I wondered what streaming meant. That's what it means. So streaming means you're kind of uh, broadcasting live. You, there's two ways to get stuff, you know, video from the internet. One is to download it, which means you download the whole thing and then watch it. Or... Press a streaming button. Oh, yeah, Fox News does stream on their website, video.foxnews.com. So you need, there's a couple of ways you can do that. If you want it on your TV, it's a little more complicated. If you have a computer or a tablet, you could just use your browser and go to foxnews.com and you can watch it stream there. So you'll get all of the Fox News channel there. Uh, you can't get it over the air, though. So I'll give you, you think, boy, a whole bunch of acronyms here ota stands for over the air and that's when you use an antenna now over the air tv 
uh, is a great deal because it's free. It's how we used to watch TV. Remember that? Yes, I <laughs> You'd do. You get three channels. <laughs> and, right. <laughs> uh, that still works, although I'm not sure how much longer it will, but that still works. But nowadays, uh, you need often an a, a antenna that can support the frequencies TV's on. It's moved to different frequencies over the last few years because of digital. Um, and, and so you might, I'll tell you what, there's a great website I'm going to send you to called TV Fool. TVFool.com. It can tell you, you enter in your zip code or your address, it could tell you where to aim your antenna and what you what you can expect to get and even recommend what kinds of antennas to use. Oh. Okay. Okay. So, there so that so over the air is going to be the best deal. But for that you're only going to get, you know, the locals, KTLA and stuff like that. You're not going to get uh, any cable channels which includes Fox News or CNN or ESPN, the sports channels, to get them without a cable subscription, you'll need to go, and here's another phrase, over the top. <laughs> That's when you put a television station on the Internet. That streaming on the Internet is over the top. So if you want an over the top, or sometimes they say OTA versus OTT versus OTA, if you want an over the top station... You can check to see what their requirements are. Something like HBO, for instance, will let you pay them directly $15 a month and you can use their app. Netflix, you pay ten eight to $10 a month and you can use their app and you can watch movies. So well, that's, that's what they're called then. They're called yeah. Uh, they're called over-the-top solutions because instead of using your cable or your or to watch TV, you're using the Internet to watch TV, but it's only those stations that do that. And one of the reasons they don't is because the cable companies still wield a lot of power in this country. And so Fox News, for instance, is, is reluctant to get them angry because they want them they want them to offer it on the cable. So they they often do not offer um you know internet only versions of their stuff. Or you maybe you pay extra. So I'm gonna give you one more way that you could get all of this fairly inexpensively and that's youtube tv which is a tv.youtube.com you have to pay i think 25 bucks a month for it but it will allow you to get it over the internet on a computer do you have you have a computer you could watch tv or a tablet you could watch tv on yes yeah so that'll give you more choice in fact it also gives you the locals so if you can't get the locals over the air on an antenna for free you could pay a little bit to get it there's several companies that do this sony does it with their plate with their uh, sony view network slingbox does it with sling tv i was just going to ask you about sling i've been yeah. getting ads about that. sling tv is a over the top right that means it's on the internet streaming solution that you pay a monthly fee for and in some areas, like yours, you can get local television stations as well. Okay. And some of these may have senior discounts, so you should certainly inquire. Oh, okay. Yeah, as long as you have internet, fairly good internet, uh, really you can see almost everything. There's just a few live things like live sports, the Oscars, things like that that are hard to get. Well, thank you for speaking in my language. Oh, I'm glad I did. I had to define some terms, though, right? Because they yes. like to, I don't know why, but geeks like to leave us out with their acronyms and their fancy terms and all that stuff. And I mention it only so that when you hear streaming and things like that, you'll understand what they're talking about. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I, I'm very happy with YouTube TV. I think it's a very good deal. Um, but I think Sling TV, if you're getting ads for that, that's another good one. Uh, they they um, they offer for a monthly fee, usually around thirty or forty dollars for for Sling TV. I think a lot of channels, but over the air is the best deal of all. You just you know it might take a little bit fancier antenna, maybe a powered antenna, might take a little aiming. TVFool.com will help you with that. Sling, Hulu, Live TV, PlayStation View, all have Fox News. Let me check my uh, YouTube. TV.YouTube. I subscribe to that one. I like the user interface on that one. I find it very easy to use. 
Let me just see if I get uh, Fox News on that one. I, I can't remember. I don't think I get uh, CNN. Yes. Looks like all the Fox channels are on that. And then National Geographic and BBC, Fox News. So Fox News is on, uh, is on the YouTube TV as well. I like the interface on YouTube TV. You just hover it over the show and you actually the, see it playing, which is kind of cool. really like that. 8888 ask Leo. <laughs> Somebody said in the chat room, Leo. You're one of the people that uses all those phrases. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm the one. Gene in Pasadena. Hi, Gene. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, Leo. Uh, I've been perplexed in the last couple of months to, with my disk space being eaten up by something, and I don't know what's doing it. Huh. Um, so you're getting, your disk space is getting lower and lower. Well, yeah, I, a couple about a month and a half ago, I got a message uh, from the system. I'm, I'm running on a laptop with uh, Windows Seven, <clears throat> and and it was saying I was down to low memory and then went to critical memory. And, hey. and uh, I was afraid I was going to lose the whole shebang. Yeah, but <clears throat> but uh, but I I couldn't tell what it was coming from, and I, I cleared off some. Space and, and clear off about 12 right. gigs of lift. Are you using Windows or a Mac? Windows. Windows. Yeah. Windows 7. And uh, and that 12 gig, you know, I mean, I download some things from the Internet, but, but not not 12 gigs worth. And well, there's... gig disappeared in about a month and a half. Yeah, there's uh, certainly... Um, Windows stores stuff, your browser stores stuff in temporary files. And those can fill up. If you browse around a lot, your cache can fill up. Let me start you with a program that's free that I really like called WinDirStat. W-I-N-D-I-R. Winder, S-T-A-T. And it's at WinDirStat.net. It's, it's free. And it shows you in blobs, in big colorful blobs, what's using up space on your Windows install. And you well, can, actually, uh, I've, I've actually been down that path and looking for space and analysis, and, and there seemed to be a consensus now on on a program that's called uh, Disk Savvy. Okay. No. Well, if it tells you what you need to know and it'll let you delete it, then uh, that's a good one. I'm not familiar with that. 8888, oh yeah, Disk Space Analyzer. It's not free. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Yeah, I mean, Winderstat's free. Well, so is this. But but the problem is, uh, you know, I, I, I can't scan my whole disk because it's limited as a, as a freeware version to... Uh, yeah, so get Winderstat, which is free. Free, free. And, and the main thing you want to look at is what's, what's going on and, and what's using it up. That's all. I mean... The, yeah. I understand that. My question has to do with, you know, I, I looked at the uh, the main slice windows directory. Yeah. And and I sorted the top 100 biggest files. And and there's nothing there that's been updated recently that's taking up a significant amount of space. And so it's not in the in the slice windows directory or subdirectories. So where are these temp files uh, located? Well, I, and I don't know if it's temp files or something else. All I can say is one more time, get Winderstat and look at what's taking up space. Uh, and then it looks in the whole drive and it will tell you uh, where it is that's taking up space and will help you delete those. Um, really, what you need to do is figure out what's, going on and it, and again temp i mentioned temp files and, and browser cache files but there are other things that can take up space i don't know how you use your hard drive so um the what you what you start what you need to start with is information and uh yeah see since that other program disk savvy is not free it isn't giving you the information you need there are other programs that will do this but winderstat is free <laughs> And looks at the whole drive. So I don't know why you're resisting me on that one. That's the one to use. 
Um, and and then, but 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 it's only going to tell you what you know what's going on, and then you're going to have to decide what you want to do about it. There are settings on uh, all the browsers on how much space can be used for temp files. I'm not sure why it's going through so much space so fast. Maybe you have, yeah, if you upgraded to Windows 10, I'm looking at the chat room, if you upgraded to Windows 10, uh, sometimes the problem there is that uh, you have the old system, windows.old, you can delete that. If your hard drive is getting corrupt, yeah, Gollum's got a good point. If your hard drive is failing and you've got corrupt files, that can do it. But I think the first thing you want to do is really get that information. And, uh, and this is a free program. It will look at the whole drive. And then it shows you in colors the types of files. And you can tell by the color, the size of the blob, what's going on. The Windows folder itself is not where this stuff gets stored. Our show today brought to you by, oh, I love these guys, Captera. Whoa. I love how Captera swooped in. It, it happens a lot. People will call and say, Leo, I, uh, I don't know, I work for a doctor. I work for a dentist. I work for a lawyer. And uh, my boss said I had to find software to help us manage our law firm or manage, uh, you know, the medical practice. Or I need to, f I need to find software to uh, run my laundromat. <laughs> First thing you do is you Google, right? But all you're going to get is a bunch of, you know, search results. Maybe call uh, call the tech guy, but he's, I don't know. I'm not an expert. Can I recommend a free solution? It's easy to use. It costs you nothing. They don't collect email addresses that, or anything. They just help you find your business software that you need. It's called Captera. It's a software comparison site. They have 400 categories more than 400 categories of business software to, for you to choose from. So from 360-degree uh, feed Mac to, I mean, look at all these categories, to yoga studio. Let's say, okay, I need to manage my yoga studio. You know there are a ton of packages out there for managing yoga studios? <laughs> look at this. <laughs> There's a ton of them. But what one's right for you? Well, you go to captera.com. You do the search. You can read about each. You can get reviews. And you can even, and this is what I would suggest, narrow it down by product rating. Let's say I only want to see four-star stuff that allows me to have 10 to 49 users. Do you want it on the web or on your hard drive? Do you need class scheduling, staff management? Do you need member management and online payments? Let's just click a few boxes. And then it's narrowed it down to 11 products with all of those features. Now I say, well, I'm going to try Zen Planner. Uh, Glowfox sounds good. Fitly, I've heard of that one. So you're going to create a comparison chart that has the products you're interested in, price, capabilities, platform, everything you need to know, ratings, and reviews, real reviews from real users. Oh, my God, this is what you've been looking for, captera.com for any kind of business software. It's absolutely free. There's no obligation. There's no need to register. You will not get f annoying follow-up emails or phone calls. And most importantly, you're going to find the right software without spending weeks or months sifting through Google search results or asking people like me. This is awesome. Everything you need to know in one place. Don't waste time and money on software that's that's not right for your business. Do what the big boys do, Coca-Cola and Walmart and Warner Brothers, the Home Depot, Whole Foods. Three million people every month use Captera, and that's why Captera works. They've got so many res search results, so much information. They've got a great blog with information about business software. You run a nonprofit? You run a ch how about church software? You wouldn't believe how much church saw. If you were the if you were trying to narrow it down, you would have to go through a ton of programs. Instead, Captera. They even sort it by most popular, most affordable, and most user friendly. Look at that. You couldn't get easier. You couldn't Captera.com slash tech guy. Do use that uh, address if you would, because that way they'll know you heard it here. 
C A P T E R R A dot com slash tech guy. And if there's somebody you know, you know, if your friends call up and say, Oh, you won't believe what I have to do this weekend, tell them about it. Captera dot com slash tech guy. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smartwatches, self-driving cars. The list has gotten so long. Anything with a chip in it, you know, any kind of technology. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the phone number. 888-827-5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada, outside that area. You can still reach us, uh, you know, Skype or something to call that number. You need Skype out. 888-827-5536. The website is techguylabs.com. That's free. There's no charge. No sign up. I don't have a newsletter. I want you to pay for it. I have a newsletter because I'm lazy. I don't want to do a newsletter. I don't have... Uh, <laughs> it's just you go there and you can access it. There's a very good search tool. You can find answers to previous questions. You can find audio and video from previous shows. Techguylabs.com. Com. That's really all you need to remember. Everything I mention will be there. I'm really torn. And you hear this on the show. We're in um, an interesting time in technology where there's a lot of us who've been around for 20 or 30 years who have kind of one vision and understanding of technology. And then there's a newer generation that has a completely different relationship and a completely different understanding and, ex and expectations, expectations are probably the most important thing about technology. And then there's, in the middle, there's a bunch of people who, because they're, you know, not in their 20s, ex think that, well, you need a computer, you go out and you buy Windows. They're still stuck in that old generation, even though we've moved on, the rest of the world's moved on. And so uh, this last call made me, made me think about this. Um, you know, for a long time, if you wanted to use technology, you bought a computer. You bought a Windows computer. You know, that's how we did it in the 90s. And then your, it was your responsibility to kind of maintain it and disk defrag and optimize and delete stuff. And people got pretty good at that. But it was really kind of a, if you think about it now, and in hindsight, it's kind of like the early days of cars or something, you know, where you had to know how to change your oil and <laughs> change a tire and all that stuff. Uh, in the earliest days of cars, you, you, when you buy a car, you'd get an expert that came along with it, like a chauffeur who knew how to do all that stuff. It was too complicated for mere mortals. It, it, we've come a long way. And nowadays, com, com, computer technology has really become consumer technology. But a lot of us still think of it in the, in the old fashion, like, oh, why is my hard drive filling up and do I need to defrag it or... What's the tool I can use to scrape it and clean it and all that? Yeah, and you shouldn't have to. You know, your hard drive's starting to fill up. Um, well, there's a whole school of people who say, well, what you need to do is go out in there and get that seat cleaner there and, and delete. You shouldn't have to do that. The operating system should take care of that. And I think most, I think Windows 10 probably does. You're, there's no way in this day and age you should be responsible for changing the oil on your computer. That's just nuts. And most people aren't even using a desktop computer with Windows. They're using a laptop. I, I strongly encourage people to use tablets and Chromebooks unless you know you need a general purpose operating system. Your smartphone's a good example. That's an extremely powerful computer. And while there are mysteries, like why is my storage filling up, I guess there still are those kind of mysteries. Generally, most of the time, you don't think about that. You just use it. People don't think about, oh, how do I defrag my iPhone? That doesn't, I think that doesn't compute. So we're kind of in this in-between stage between technology and computing really being a consumer technology that you shouldn't have to, you don't think about, you know, maintaining your microwave. And, and the old days, the way things used to be. You shouldn't have to change your oil every 3,000 megabytes. I'm sorry, you shouldn't have to. And you shouldn't, frankly, you shouldn't really have to think about where's my hard drive space going. That shouldn't come up. It should just work. And I understand it doesn't. And I'm glad to help you, but uh, it's, it's a little frustrating. And I think people are still maybe buying Windows, for instance, when they shouldn't be. You should start to start to get out of that. That's oh, that's a '90s mindset. That's a '90s mindset. 
Bill Clinton is not the president. It's <laughs> times have changed. It's different now. Boy, is it different. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's the phone number if you have a question, a comment, a suggestion. And yes, I'll be glad to help you with your 90s computer questions. I will. I've been doing it that long. Cindy Los Angeles is next. Hi, Cindy. Hello? Hey, welcome. Thanks for hey. hanging on. Hey, Leo. Hey, Thank Cindy. Thank you for taking my call. I had a question about the Echo. Two questions. If you have the current Echo, not the one with the screen... Does it work alongside with the new one as yeah. far as the intercom system? Yes, but you only get audio, yeah. obviously. <laughs> right. If you have the Echo Show, the one with the screen, you'll get video. But uh, yeah, so I okay. use it. So we have a we have a mixed household. I have all kinds of Echoes. I have Dots. I have the original Echo, the very first one that came out, and I have Echo Shows, the new one with the screen, and I can use the intercom system on any of them. So I put one of the sound-only ones in my 14-year-old son's room because it, it's really cool because I can say, hey, Michael, time to get up, uh, like a voice from God. Which, <laughs> so what he, what he immediately did, by the way, was unplug it. But it was great while it lasted. I only got to do that once. Michael, this is your maker. Wake up. Oh man, that was fun. And then it dis mysteriously disappeared. Yeah, then it suddenly stopped working. I know I said, I don't know. There's no echo in Michael's bedroom. What are you talking about? Kids are too smart okay. these kids are too smart these days. All right, question number two. I heard a caller, I think it was last week or previous caller, say that he used the uh, uh, calling feature that he fell in the kitchen or something and called his brother yeah. to get help. But I thought you couldn't make phone calls. You can't make phone calls. You can make echo to echo calls. So his brother oh, obviously had, had, a, had an Amazon Echo. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Then that's one of the things that the Google version of this, the Google Home, does make phone calls. You can say, you know, you can't say 911. I don't think it supports 911. But you can say, you know, call mom and tell her I'm, you know, I'm sick and I'm not coming to Thanksgiving dinner or whatever it is. And it will call a regular phone, but not the Echo. No, the Echo is only Echo to Echo. Oh, okay. Well, they'll probably have that feature soon because they didn't have as many apps for the Google one, right? No. Nope. the Echo. Well, it's just different. It, um, so the Google, so Echo will let you to listen to music on uh, Amazon and Pandora. Google will let you listen to music on Google. Google is better at answering generic fact, factual questions. Uh, but the Echo is better at buying stuff on Amazon. What a surprise. <laughs> Google's <laughs> trying to catch up. They just did a partnership with Walmart. They have a whole buying system that you can buy things at Target and Walmart and all sorts of places, but you have to kind of set it up ahead of time. Echo has this oh. really amazing task ecosystem with 50,000 tasks, but I don't think yeah, that's we... really easy to use because you have to know the task is out there. You have to activate it. So there's research involved. That leads me to a question I just was, I was checking out the, the one with the screen. What's it called? The show. The, the show. And somebody was saying, I was reading something online, and they were saying it's great except for one thing. They were giving an example of a news, something that was going on in the news that the Echo didn't have any clue. They weren't reporting. Say it was like a flood. Yeah. Google they tends to be better at that stuff. But and the Echo didn't even have it. Was it showing it on the screen? Right. Was showing the news cast of it right so um you could so it just depends for instance you can watch this show on an echo show you can say echo uh watch the watch the tech guy on uh, youtube and because i'm on youtube it'll pull up and it'll show the video uh but you oh i didn't know it does that it shows that kind of thing on yeah there. it can show youtube you can listen to radio stations on tuning so you can ask it for news stations and listen there's also a flash briefing that you can uh, program what sources you want in the flash briefing and it'll give you you know news on the hour and all that stuff so yeah you're right it's the little, the little text that shows up on the echo is kind of random but you but you can get news sources including video you can get jimmy fallon's monologue every morning if you want leo laporte the tech guy So I can, uh, I don't, I don't know what I, what news sources I could do. Let's try it. Let me, let me just see. Echo. Watch CNN on TuneIn. I don't know if I get video or not. No. Nope. Echo. Watch Twit Live on YouTube. Playing top result from YouTube. 
So because we're on YouTube Live, it'll work. Um, uh oh, now I'm in an inception. So because we're on YouTube Live, it'll work. Um, uh oh, now I'm in an inception. So because we're on YouTube Live, it'll work. Oh boy. Uh, echo, stop. Uh, I wonder what news I could do. Anybody know what news you could do? Echo, watch Fox News. I'm not sure which video you want. Echo, watch news on YouTube Live. Playing top result from YouTube. The course of this meeting there on the tarmac is final moment. Fox News. To really go down and... And thank members of the military. We know that they so are the So if it's on YouTube, you can watch it. Um, and there, but there are a variety of providers, but YouTube's the one I. Please subscribe for more. <laughs> oh, but it came back. President Trump and the First Lady Melania. Echo. Watch. Sure so subscribe to victims. please subscribe for more Houston. HD stream. Uh, but I'm a YouTube Red Houston. subscriber. I don't know what it is that you need to subscribe to. I mean, I don't know if this is going to stop or. Molly, before the president left, uh, this is live. The airport there. We this did this see is him this just happened. Some affected. So I don't. I don't. I actually don't know. Echo, stop. Um. Echo, listen to CNN on TuneIn. CNN from Leo's TuneIn. So it'll play audio. <laughs> Including Ace. Well, the worst thing about CNN on TuneIn is it has repetitive bad ads. Echo, stop. But you can li listen to it. So like if you're watching the debates or some sort of, you know, you want to. Echo, stop. Um, Echo. Watch the BBC on YouTube. Playing top result from YouTube. The phrases being used like hard Brexit and soft Brexit are, of course, political and for many are added. I presume that's live. That's BBC News. Echo. Watch Al Jazeera on YouTube live. Echo. Watch Al Jazeera on YouTube. Playing top result from YouTube. Uh, song and dance on the streets of Nairobi. Seems live. Seems like it's not starting at the beginning of a video. Yeah, it's live. Yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty amazing, really. Echo, stop. And it's just like a TV. I mean, it's great. It's like a little kitchen TV. I love the Echo show. I'm, a, I'm like, this is the Echo everybody should have. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888, ask Leo the phone number. So I just did a little research with my Echo, my Amazon Echo. I have the show, the one with the screen on it. And there's actually quite, if it's on YouTube Live, you can watch it. So I tried Al Jazeera, BBC, Fox News, all of which I was able to watch live on the Echo, uh, on the screen. So yeah, you can get news on your Echo. This is actually, I mean, it's a little seven-inch screen. So, but I think for a bedside table or a kitchen counter, this is the Echo to get. Uh, a little more expensive. I think it's 200 bucks, but it gives you 250 something like that. But it gives you a video in addition to all the other Echo features. That's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. Pretty nice. Uh, back to the phones we go. And Cindy in... Lo oh, wait a minute. I think I talked to Cindy. Let's go to uh, Joe in... Harbor City, California. Hi, Joe. Hi, Leo. How are you, sir? I am great. Welcome. Thank you very much. Another guy with no hard drive space. Uh, yes. Uh, well, yes. Yes and no. So the I have two issues, and they were both, I believe, caused by something I did on the iMac. The iMac told me it could not give me any updates because there wasn't enough disk space. Dang it. And I have, I have two hard disks. So what I did was I took all the music, videos, and photographs. I have 8,000 songs. I forget how many pictures and things. And moved them to the other hard disk. I told iTunes that's where the music is. So 
so far, so good. Good. What happened was two two weird things. First, I have the uh, Bose Sound Touch Internet speakers. Yeah. And for some reason, it, I guess it's not. It doesn't connect through iTunes. When you ask it to... No, play. you have to... I, I suspect what you have to do, and it's probably a setting in the Bose, is you have to reconnect it because you moved the music. Yeah, and I tried that. I tried deleting it. You know, it, I think it's called My Playlist or something like that. I tried deleting it and then re reinstalling it. And no matter what I do, it only recognizes songs on the original hard disk. It won't recognize songs on the other hard disk. Weird. Do you, do you run Bose software on the Mac? No, it's just... It's probably so. I I would imagine, I'm guessing. Tell me if this is wrong. That the Bose speakers are using the iTunes Music Server as the source of their music. I that's what I thought. Or or use or do you install some Bose software on the on the Mac? Well, there is uh, the Sound Touch. Uh, ah, where it is on the there's Mac. There's the problem. Okay, so if they were using, and this is the proper way to do it, if they were using iTunes as a music server iTunes knows where your music is. Right. But the Bose software does not. It's confused. Uh, yeah, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, a, that's just, you know, probably poorly coded software. It shouldn't matter what drive as long as it can see that drive that the music is on. Look in the software settings and see what it says about your music library. Okay. It, it, if it's right. hard, it could be. Because people, you know, as I said, humans are fallible and, you know, computers are very literal minded. And if the human who wrote that software said, always look on the boot drive for the iTunes music folder, then that isn't going to work. If the guy was a little more savvy and said, query iTunes, ask iTunes where the music is and look there, then it would work. But, you know, mistakes happen. Yep. That makes too much sense. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's just poor programming on Bose's part. But, you know, they hired some kid. And the other issue that I'm having, uh, which I think is connected, is when I, you know, I have a playlist, of course. And my main playlist, which has, uh, which had 500 and something songs, was called Special. That's all I call just so I could di di differentiate it. Yeah. Now, I have, for some reason, on both my... Uh, iMac, my iPad, I have special, special one, special two. <laughs> I don't, I don't know where they're coming from, and none of them have the original 500 songs. And it seemed to happen after I try, after I plug the um, iPad into the computer, you know, to sync. So Although the I way that Mac and the, the way Mac works is if the it finds a um, duplicate file uh, or a duplicate folder name. It adds a number. <laughs> so for some reason, uh, it decided, oh, I already have that folder. Let me create a new folder and put a number after it. <laughs> so, yeah, so this happens when you're syncing with iTunes? It, it, hap it seems to start when I sync the iPad with iTunes, although I normally do that through the, um, you know, through the cloud. But I plugged it ah, in. Ah, so it could be could be a sees a folder in iCloud and and thinks that's you know name music thinks that's different from a folder on your hard drive named music. Uh, mm -hmm. And there is a clue in there as to what songs it synced, but I'm not sure how to read those tea leaves. Something like, uh, well, oh, I remember because I did this, I changed this, and then I had some new songs, and that's what's in music two. I don't know iTunes is terrible. Yeah. iTunes is terrible. Because yeah. yeah, my original playlist of 500 songs now is 30, and I don't yeah. know what happened. I mean, yeah. the songs are still there because it's still That's interesting. So it's the playlist that's confused, or is it, the songs are not getting synced? Uh, it's the, creating a new playlist is what's happening. It, it's creating a new playlist, okay. and the original playlist was reduced to 30 songs. Right. So, oh, that's not I good. That's bad behavior because you put a lot of effort into that playlist, presumably. Yeah, I mean, I, I can always redo it. Taste change. I would delete. You know, I would delete all those playlists, all of them, and start over and see if that. Start works. all over again. Yeah. Yeah, and then I think, and I think maybe just make sure I back everything up. Syncing is you notoriously talk. challenging because you don't know. You know, if there's changes on both ends, you don't know which one to save and all sorts of things. So it's doing what it thinks is best, 
which is creating a, a new sync in effect, a new playlist saying, well, here's a new one. What it What is not good is the thing that it sounds like it did do, which is it damaged your old playlist. It deleted stuff from your old playlist. That's not right. Right. Yeah. You know, you, you were just talking about generations. I remember doing ex executable DOS files. Yeah, right. So so Apple makes my, makes my eyes cross sometimes. <laughs> well, but that's the thing. We kind of get in our, our mindset, don't we? And... Um, and we're all stuck a little bit in the way things used to be. You know, I am too. And and it's well, a it's different... Also, it's also kind of muscle memory, because it's like having right. a right-handed person trying to do everything That's left That's exactly it's, right. It's weird. So um, I'm looking on the Bose support site. I want to thank Golem in our chat room. He sent me a link that says, SoundTouch app will not sync with iTunes library. Uh, got a new computer, transferred all the music off the old dead one onto a new one. Uh, SoundTouch app... Tried to add the iTunes library. 1608 error. Well, uh, I don't know what's going on. It's it does you know you might look in these in this uh, community.bose.com for similar. Sim it sounds like it sounds like it's looking or should be looking at the iTunes XML file, which is the index of where songs are. Make sure iTunes... Okay, here's a setting you might want to look at. Make sure iTunes is sharing its XML file. I don't know how you do that. I've never even heard of doing that. But that is apparently a setting, and it can confuse the Bose software. So look in your iTunes settings for sharing the XML file. I didn't know that was a feature. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Make sure to select the sharing... So there's a preference. This is, uh, you know, I'll put this in the, uh, we'll put this in the show notes so you can at least read through this and see if it makes any sense to you. It does, it does look like that's, the, the, the good news is it looks like the SoundTouch software looks at the iTunes XML file, and that should have the information about where the music is actually located. Um, is is the XML file something that should have been moved when I, when I moved the music itself? Yes. Pro well... No. So all I did was create a folder in the other hard drive that said music, and then I copied all of the all the folders with all the music in it and over into the other one, and then deleted it from the original. <sighs> that may have confused it. That's probably what happened. That may have confused it because it builds that XML file when you uh, index the music. So, um, and I'm looking at the settings, by the way. It's, the, I, it's in that same folder setting that you went to, the iTunes media folder location. Below that, there's share iTunes XML, uh, library XML with other applications. That must be checked. So do, uh. do look in there, make sure that's checked. But, well, wait a minute, though. I, iTunes, by the way, that's also where your playlists are stored in this XML file. So right. it could be related. Uh, iTunes, yeah. if iTunes can play the music, its XML file is correct. So, yeah. an XML file yeah. is basically a preferences file. It's a plain text file that has prefer, you know, information about where songs are, what's in your playlists, that kind of thing. So right. That could have been munged. <laughs> could have been munged. Munged, munged is munged. another old old school term. And then uh, here's another uh, article we're going to put in there uh, from the SoundTouch website, Syncing the Music Library. And interestingly, this is marked July 13th, 2017, so it's very recent. Yeah, so okay. So I wonder... Uh, yeah, you know what? Look at this. It says, on the computer containing the music library, right-click the sound touch icon near the clock in the system tray or menu bar, then select Sync Music Library. So there is a Sync Music Library command in the menu, on the icon, that little note icon in your menu bar. Right. There is a Sync Music Library command. Try that. Okay, I, I I even talked to Apple and they couldn't figure it out. Well, it's a Bose thing, right? So so really, yeah, that, that's to, oh, yeah. yeah, it's not an Apple thing. It's a Bose thing. Gotcha. It's a Bose thing. You just wouldn't understand. <laughs> Our Apple just wouldn't that, understand. 
So but the sink, the uh, special one, special two, special three, that's a Bose thing or not an Apple? No, no, uh, this is going back to your problem where the, 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 original, sound, one. the original one, the sound touch isn't yeah. seeing the music. That should help right. it. But it could be related in the sense that those playlists were also stored in that XML. Did that? Did those multiple playlists start appearing after you moved the music? Yes. Yeah, I bet you it's related to that. So just That's what I thought. Just delete them all and start over. Okie dokie, Smokey. Sorry. No, hey, it's, it, you've, been a bit, you've been a much bigger help than any, anybody else I've talked to. Thanks. Well, see, I'm cross-platform. You call Apple, they only know Apple stuff. Right, right, so, exactly. And I happen to have my brain externalized into this massive chat room, so they know everything. Well, and, well, and it's and, and just like any other service provider, they they're always it's always easy for them to say, "Well, it's not it's not our fault." It's yes, it's those guys, it's those yeah. other guys that did it, and we don't know any. We can't help you with that. Go call Bose. Yeah, and you yeah. go, you call Bose. And you go, oh no, that's Apple. Right. Ugh. So I call Leo. And I call me, because I, I don't get the luxury of saying it's not my fault. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I wish I could. Oh, call Apple. That's not my... Actually, occasionally I will say, you know, I don't know. Call Apple. Sometimes yeah. people call me when they really should just call the company. Try, you know, I mean, the company knows yeah. what's going on. Well, well, that's the first step, and frankly, it's easier to get through to them. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm a premium product. Nice to talk to you. you Thanks are. for calling. Take care, Joe. All right. Thanks, Leo. See you. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, the Gizwiz, coming up in a few minutes. We're talking high tech at 8888-ASK-LEO. Steve is next from Simi Valley, California. Hi, Steve. Leo, is that you, buddy? That's me, bud. I'm here <laughs> for you. I'm here. here for me. I'm here for you. I don't know exactly how high tech a fire stick is, but maybe you could help me out. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? I don't think it's, I don't think it's very high tech. <laughs> I've got a fire stick that works fine in one TV. I unplug the thing. I go over to the other TV, which is an LG. I believe it's LG TV. Yeah. Probably like five, six years old. Ah. Plug it. I plug it into that HDMI port, and I might get any picture of sound out of it. Yeah, it's probably an older TV. So the fire stick is Amazon's. Really cool. Little, uh, you know, like a USB sized yeah. device with an HDMI port, you put it on the TV directly, and it, it smartens up a dumb TV. And in fact, putting it on an old TV is a great idea because it doesn't know anything about the internet, and you can kind right. of add the internet. But it might yeah. be so it, you do have HDMI on that old TV because you plugged it in. Right? I do. I, I can I unplug the cable box out of that port, I plug the stick right into that same port, and I get nothing, huh. So the cable box works fine. I mean, it works like it's all the there's like two ports on the thing. Both ports work fine with the cable box. I unplug it. I plug the stick into both either ports. I switch over the input signal, and I'm getting nothing. Is it the TV not reading the stick? Does uh, does your I'm trying to remember. Does a Fire Stick require a little additional power? Do you have a little USB port on that that you plug in? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she and did, you yes. did that, right? You're powering it, right? Yeah, I absolutely did. You're not I powering it from the it, TV. Like, Are you powering it? No, 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 no. We're plugging it from a, uh, an outlet. So it's plugged in, and you see a light on it and everything? Uh, there's no light on it. But there's no light. It's working because, well, I mean, I, I, I can take it and plug it into a TV right next to it, a different oh. TV, and it works fine. All right, so that's not I, I, All I do is unplug it from the one uh, HDMI out of the one TV, plug it into the other They're one. right next to each other, and the power source is the same in both cases. Exactly. Okay. Um, there you go. There's high tech for you. Yeah, no, this is high tech. This is it. This is totally high tech. You got to, you know, what's in there is a little computer, really. It's kind of cool. Uh, uh -huh. It's got a processor, storage, memory. It's got an internet, uh -huh. uh, Ethernet, uh, or not Ethernet, uh, Wi Fi uh, radio in there and uh, the whole thing. Um, and mm -hmm. do you only on that older TV have one HDMI port? There's two on there. There's two. And you've tried both. I have tried both. I'm th I have I'm thinking that my you know my first guess and it's totally a guess is just that the TV is an older HDMI standard you know 1.2 or something that maybe the Fire Stick requires. You've set it to the proper source, of course. Sometimes handshaking yep. is an issue. Uh, I'm I'm looking on the internet. There's a lot of articles on how to use a Fire Stick if your TV doesn't have HDMI, but it should work if you have HDMI. I don't think it's exactly. I, I, yeah, I was searching through the internet, but I can't find anything that's yeah. a particular problem. Yeah, and I'm like, what am I missing here? There's, I mean, it isn't that. It's not that. 
So the one thing, the one thing that is always a problem, and, and this is a kind of grasping at straws, but HDMI handshaking is always an issue. You know, when you first connect something to an HDMI port, there's a conversation that goes on between the TV and the Fire Stick. What, what, what's your resolution? What kind of, what do you handle? How can you do? Mm -hmm. So what you might try is turning the TV off, even maybe unplugging it, like really get it dead off. I did. I turned them both off. You did the whole thing, and you plugged the stick in, and then you turned it on, and all that. Yep, I let it set for like a minute. Oh, you did. So that's ex so you were thinking along the same lines. It's a handshake issue. I, that's not it either. Yeah, yeah. I thought, well, maybe I need to power everything off. Unplug yeah. it from the power source. Pull it out of the TV. Turn off the TV. Plug it back in. Right. Plug in the power. Yeah. I, that's why I'm like scratching my head when it can't be this. I mean, what am I missing here? I can't think of anything that you're missing. Uh, I think. Oh, buddy, uh, you're killing me. I know. I don't. I don't think. I think it, it's. It's. It really does sound like. Now, there's one other possibility. There may be, and this is, you know, I always like to go to this if there's something not working. Copy protection, and there may be. I don't know, but I'm gonna guess that the Fire Stick supports this HDCP content standard, which prevents people from pirating digital content. And mm -hmm. your TV is old enough it might not support it. Usually mm -hmm. what happens if you plug an HDCP non-compliant device into an HDCP source, it'll, mm -hmm. it'll usually say something like, well, these aren't going to work together. But you don't see anything on the screen. It's just, it's just blank. I'm getting nothing. Nope, it's just blank. Well, it still could be that. It could be that the TV is not compliant. And that the fire stick says, I'm not going to work with you because you might be stealing. Imagine if you would have a DVR that had a HDMI port and you plug the fire mm -hmm. stick in there and you record all your shows. That's what they're trying to prevent. Hmm. Okay. Well, so another thing we'll you could that. try, and we've had good success with this, there are devices. They're not labeled thus, but there are HDMI splitters. We've used many that happen to just weirdly strip off HDCP copy protection. I don't know why they do. They're on Amazon. They're not labeled as, you know, HDCP mm -hmm. strippers. But my suspicion is that the Chinese companies that make these kind of say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> no, yeah. Obviously, if they listed it that way on Amazon, they, the Amazon would pull it right down. Pull it. But so take sure. a take a look at one of. I and mean, they're not expensive they're five ten fifteen bucks a hdmi splitter and you know if you really want to get this thing working try that sure okay okay if that doesn't work i'll yeah. break down and buy another yeah. TV, i guess oh man i know oh, i know oh, man I'll have to stick to yeah exactly <laughs> that'll be my uh, garage tv or something I don't yeah know. sorry about that yeah How, what, what, what's the making what's the make of it uh, i believe it's an lg if i'm not LG. mistaken and it's about you think it's about five years old yeah, it's probably about five years old, five yeah. six years old. The 2012 LG should work just fine. I don't. Hmm. But it, but and 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 we know that we know everything's good because the same power, the same Fire Stick, mm -hmm. right next to it, you plug mm -hmm. it into a newer TV and it works. Yep. That's why I'm scratching my head. Going, Somebody, my Bill, before in the chat room says, press the home key on the Fire Remote two or three times. Uh, oh. I don't know if that does anything. But <laughs> I don't know. It's worth yeah. a try. It's easier than buying a stripper. When I push the home key, I've pushed it, and I can hear that stick clicking like it's oh, trying to do something. Interesting. So, so this, it, it's the so the remotes work. At first, I thought, well, maybe the remote. A not few working. times, maybe just to up. get that stick uh, going. Huh. I don't know. I yeah, don't know. maybe. Okay. Well, All right. I'll sorry. No, I'll, I'll try this splitter. Sorry. No worries. I yeah. appreciate the help. Hey, thanks, thanks for the call. Um, I, if we really wanted to go on farther, I guess we could ask for the model number of the LG, and, and you know. Maybe look at the specs online. Copy protection is just the bane of my existence and many of your existences because, you know, companies, I understand, they're so afraid that we're going to steal TV or we're going to steal DVDs. or and, and they just, it comes from assuming that your customers are thieves. And the thing that I find most frustrating is it doesn't stop thieves. It just inconveniences honest users. Thieves know all about HDCP. They know which HDCP, uh, you know, which uh, HDMI splitters strip HDCP. They know exactly what models to get. They've got a, you know, they've got chat rooms and forums, and they're talking. They know exactly what to do to get around this stuff. And they go, oh yeah, well you just get this and this, and it'll work just fine. It's normal people who just wanted to use their devices that get bit by this stuff. 
So I would submit the only kind of piracy it might prevent is casual piracy, which probably isn't costing you much money. The hardcore pirates who are making DVD copies of your movies or putting them up on BitTorrents, have they been slowed down by your copy protection? Game of Thrones is still the number one most stolen, you know, pirated TV show despite all of HBO's efforts, all of this inconvenient technology. It's not slowing anything down. All it's doing is, and by the way, the music industry and the game industry both learned this lesson. <laughs> Treat your customers like thieves. They'll become thieves. They learn how to strip the stuff out. You're, you're actually creating a problem. 8888 Ask Leo. The Gizwiz coming up next. I just love it. This is the Tracker. The Tracker is a Bluetooth tracking device that helps you not lose the most important items in your life. I keep a tracker every, you know, keys. I hate losing keys. And so I, what I've done is I've attached a tracker. This is the new Tracker Pixel. I've attached this to my uh, car keys. And actually, it's also attached to my YubiKey, which is what I, you know, is my special super duper security device. I have the Pixel Tracker on it. So I don't have to worry about losing this. And that's important to me because, well, I'm a doofus. And I, and I lose my keys all the time. You can put it in your glasses case. It's small. This is the Tracker Pixel. It's tiny. It's lightweight. They also have a Tracker Bravo, which is uh, which is anodized aluminum. It's a little tougher. You could put that on your pet. And let me show you what happens with the Tracker. I'll go to my uh, Tracker software. You pair it to your smartphone, the software on your smartphone, and you've got a map. Oh, my item was spotted. You've got a... I actually don't need those alerts. That was when I thought something was lost. I'll tell you about that in a second. But see, I see exactly where it is. And if I can't find my keys, watch this, I can press the button on my tracker software on my phone, and not only do I get a loud noise coming out of my tracker, but it's got... The new Tracker Pixel's got little LEDs in it, and it lights up. So that's really handy. If you leave your keys or they fall into the couch or somewhere where you can't find them, this is so awesome. I attach a tracker to the remote control, to my suitcases, to my bicycle. That way I always know where my stuff is. The tracker keeps, it, keep, keeps you from losing the stuff you've got. Now, you notice I had the tracker notifications turned on. Let me show you that. By the way, you can get up to 10 different trackers for a single app. Plus, you can share trackers to multiple phones. So that's handy because other people in the family can have it. If I go to the uh, settings here, there's you can have separation alerts. So for instance, if I leave the phone behind, the tracker will beep at me saying, you, you, you walked out of the house without your phone. If I leave my keys behind, the phone will beep at me. I can even, if I can't find the phone, I can press the little button on the tracker and make my phone ring. Do you notice something? It turned the volume all the way off. This phone is silenced. Didn't matter. It still makes the noise, and it turns the volume all the way up. So I love that. That's the two-way separation alerts. Tracker has one more feature I really like. I had this turned on earlier. I was getting notifications for whenever somebody saw my keys. And... See, there's 1,934 tracker devices nearby. As I'm walking around, if somebody's running the tracker software on their phone and they see their software sees my tracker, it'll ping me saying, your keys were just seen and I can pop it up on the map. So this is awesome. It uses Bluetooth to pair to your phone. As you know, Bluetooth only goes about 150 feet. Once I get 150 feet away from my keys, I can only see where they were last seen. If somebody picks them up and takes them away... That's not going to be accurate. But because of the crowd network, and there are more than 5 million trackers out there all over the world, anytime somebody with the software walks by my keys, I get a little notification saying, somebody just saw your keys in a map. So if somebody took my keys to Timbuktu, I'd know exactly where they were. I can go on and on. But well, you know what you should do is go to thetracker.com, thetracker.com, and check out the Tracker Pixel, the Tracker Bravo, very affordable. Both of them have replaceable batteries. And by the way, that is not... There are other Bluetooth trackers, 
when they run out of juice, you have to throw them away, which I just find offensive. These these will last a year. They use Bluetooth Low Energy, Bluetooth LE, so they last a long time. But you don't have to throw them out when the battery dies. You just put another one in. It's easy peasy. I love the track. You want to see how big this tracker network is? This is this is all the trackers visible out there. Actually, this is for last month. I can go back in time. Oh, well, let me zoom out so you can see. Every dot is a <laughs> every dot is a tracker. Five million trackers all over the world. Okay, if you lose your keys in the Sahara, you might be out of luck. Or Siberia. But anywhere in Europe, Asia, Australia, South America, Africa, you're covered. You want to get a tracker? I got a deal for you. If you go to the tracker.com, T H E T R A C K R dot com, and use our promo code Tech Guy, whoa, they just upped this. 20% off any order. Nice. I'm going to go get some more. T H E, this is awesome. T H E T R A C K R dot com. They have a wallet version, a little thin card you can put in your wallet. They work with the uh, Amazon Echo. You could say, Where are my keys? I love that. And uh, the new Pixel, the Tracker Bravo, lots of great devices out there. This is a fabulous product. You might have seen them. I think, was it Kickstarter they started on? Now they're like the premier Bluetooth tracker. TheTracker.com. Use the promo code TechGuy. Fill up your cart. Fill it up. Use the promo code TechGuy to get 20% off. See, he's, he's, he's got it on his... That's where I put it. I put it on my bag. Oh, I have one on my camera, too. I, my camera is very valuable. I don't want to lose it. So I put a tracker. It just, it's easy. It just comes, you know, puts right off the camera. It doesn't take add any weight. Love it. TheTracker.com. Use the offer code TechGuy to save 20% off. <laughs> Did they play this at the roller rink, huh? <laughs> Michael Cosio, my musical director, always finds the perfect music for this guy right here. He knows he's a disco maven. Dick D. Bartolo, Mad Magazine's maddest writer, disco dancer, and <laughs> Gizwiz. Yeah, all hey. three. It's three and one. Three and one. It's amazing. He even has a disco ball above him right now, and his floor lights up, and he's got a white suit. Oh no, that's. I'm sorry. That's yeah. Don no, the mirror at ball parts. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No question about that. Did and you, I do have. Uh, you had a dancing. boat with all that stuff. I did. Yeah, I had dancing my own waters. dancing waters. Yeah, yeah. Dickie D is uh, is besides being a famous at Mad Magazine and a guy I kind of my hero for years. I, when I was a kid, I read him religiously. The funny thing is, he was a kid too. He started in high school writing for Mad Magazine. Yeah, and it's supported his uh, gadget habit all this time. He's the gizmo. That is that is correct. Yeah. Uh, a quick update: my ice maker I talked about last week. Yeah. I woke up uh, one day. Uh, there was just water in there. Uh oh. So I unplugged it. Uh, emailed uh, Amazon and Rosewill, who made it. Emailed me within two hours. Sorry about that. Here's a return label. Have your money back. You have two weeks to return it. So for last, I plugged it in, and of course. Every minute since then, it's been making ice every eight minutes. <laughs> you know what? When you scare a gadget, you can... <laughs> You're going to huh? send me back. No. no, no I'll make no. ice for you. I'll make ice for but you. But if you one little hiccup and you're going back. Boom. Oh. Well, that's good to know. And it's good to know Rose will... Uh, stepped right up so that's oh, right up you know uh at first it, it's intimidating because we will evaluate your uh, return i just said well it doesn't work bam yeah, that's all <laughs> Here's oh. a label oh yeah. in that case yeah. well in that case yeah. every you know there's uh, people often say oh it broke you know it's terrible everything will break there's nothing no company can make 100 percent perfect products i always judge a company by how responsive they are if it doesn't work if there's a problem yes and also i like the fact it said if you can return it in the original packaging that would be great if not just package oh. uh, package it up as you can even better the, even better are even you better. you don't have room to save boxes for all the stuff you've got <laughs> no no you know what i literally do save boxes for 10 days yeah i figure That's what if I something do. runs yeah. yes you do the same thing right yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. I, I save it for a very short period of time. If it's like expense, really expensive, I might save it for a month. But uh, yeah, you don't want to save it forever. If it works for yeah. a month, you're all right. So what That's do you got? For, what what, so Leo, what I, crap I have can I throw the, out the, today? <laughs> probably the cheapest thing I've ever talked about that everybody I show it to goes, that's great. So mainly for people who take pills during the day or people who want to carry aspirins around in I, case they I started feel, doing uh, that when I started doing this show. Yeah, <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. Well, the thing is, no matter where you are, you can have the pills in your pocket. But what are you going to use for water? So this is a great little thing called a strange name, Port-O-Pill. port -O -Pil. And what it is, is a little ounce and a half of oh. water with a separate compartment at the top oh. to carry pills. So it's a little shot of water and the pills you need. And uh, yes, uh, well, Dennis uh, bought, just bought one. He's putting vodka in the bottom <laughs> and, and, and and nuts nuts in the top for when you when you want to turn coach a, into first class. Pour a cocktail party. I like it. Well, yeah, and it, it's five bucks, five bucks and twenty That's cents, great. and Amazon Prime. So it's, you got, you'll it's, get it tomorrow. Get day after tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's really great. And um, I do carry aspirins in my backpack, but now this is so that's easy a to good, do. That's a really good idea. I really yeah. like that. Yeah. And you'll yeah. find out more if you want uh, at the uh, website, gizwiz.biz. Click the link that says the Gizwiz visits the tech guy. And he's got all the notes and an Amazon link and a video of you drinking the vodka and the and all, and all of that. Yes, exactly. That's really exactly. cool. That's really yeah. cool. Now, I was, I just was over at the What the Heck Is It contest, and I noticed yes, yes. here we are, second day of September. You've just wrapped up a game. To get, yeah. It gives you a close did up. You, did, you have, did you have any idea what that was? No idea, but apparently uh, a lot of people did. Yes. Are you putting it in now? Oh, my gosh. So it's, um, <laughs> it's hard to describe. It's a mouthpiece you put in with LEDs in it, and then your mouth blinks. Yes, your mouth. Your, it's like a disco ball in your mouth. <laughs> well, I don't know why you'd want that. but yeah, No, I just thought of it. Next time I go to the dentist, I'm going to say, Doc, I don't know what's going on with my teeth, but they're blinking. I guess for Halloween it'd be good. Oh, this this is a great thing for Halloween. Yeah. And, um, I, I bought a couple dozen for the meetup because they're cheap. Uh, two dozen for twenty dollars. So it's you, a fun thing. You know, to, I you ordered know. those uh, those LED eyelash. Oh, you did? Things. Did you get them? Not yet. Uh, oh, I can't wait to see. I figure that. if I wear that and the LED eyelash. Uh, maybe people will think I'm insane. I don't know. I don't know what the reaction will be. Well, like, I think you've got a head start just without <laughs> anything. Really, but, could yeah. could be just looking at me. But but yeah. this will confirm. No, actually, it. yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it's called a uh, it's an LED mouthpiece basically. A LED light up mouthpiece wow. exactly. And but, you can turn it on and off with your teeth. It says on the box. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that convenient? Well, I don't want to have to take it out all the time. Exactly. Uh, so th this this uh, is an example of for your edification what goes on with the what the heck is it contest a close up picture of a gizmo or gadget uh, this also looks like you put it in your mouth oh I know what it is it's a soap holder for your mouth for when you have oh, to that's wash a great your mouth guess. That's a great in, be guess. in between getting your mouth washed out with soap you, your mom could just put it there so send can... that in unlike <laughs> other contests employers can, can employees can, allowed can, can, okay. can play exactly so the idea is you're going to look at this you're going to think of what it is now uh, you don't have to be right that's that's the most important point here uh, there are 12 autographed mad magazines for the wrong for the right answer but there's 24 for the best wrong answer but the funniest or cleverest wrong answer but you can find out all about it at dick's website giz whiz dot biz g i z w i z dot b i z you can also watch his fabulous show that he does with Chad Johnson, gizwiz.tv. Perfect. Thank you. Dickie okay, D. buddy. Have a great see day. We'll see you, you next too. week. Have fun in Disneyland. I'm sorry, Gizney. And <laughs> from Leland, North Carolina, I'm going to try. Hi, Tom. Hey, Leo. How's it going? I'm doing hey. great. How are you? Oh, good. Well, I finally got uh, fiber coming up to the house. Oh, I'm so jealous. And uh, so I opted for the gig bite. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, well. How much a month? Right away. Uh, 70. Not bad. 
Boy, that's what I pay Comcast for one tenth the speed. So that's a good okay. deal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this now. When they hooked it up, okay, uh, I ran a speed test, and uh, well, it didn't do too bad. It was probably right around four megs. Okay. And I said, well, you know, they're still installing it around the neighborhood and everything. I said, well, I give it some time. So when you wait, so, don't you say four megabytes a second, or f right. it should you you if you're doing Wi-Fi, four hundred megabits a second on a gigabit fiber would be about right. Uh -huh. On Wi-Fi. Remember, Wi-Fi doesn't give you the full throughput. If you want to see what you're getting, connect a computer with an Ethernet cable to the box in your house and then run well, speed test. The other well, problem is you I may said. be faster than the speed test. In other words, the speed test may not be capable of serving you at a gigabit. So you can't always assume that's the case. I'd try a number of speed tests. It should be faster than four megabits. <laughs> that's for sure. Oh, man. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy Show for today. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, it's just the tip of the iceberg. We do nearly 30 shows on the Netcast Network. It's called TWIT, T-W-I-T. It stands for This Week in Tech, and you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security on Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on and on. You even get your daily dose of tech news with Tech News Today. And, of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon, This Week in Tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great Tech Guy show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time. So, so before you before you go, I want to get a little more information on this, uh, Tom. So, who's providing the the uh, fiber? Who's who's doing it? Uh, ATMC. Okay. Now, and what they try to tell me now, see, I did run a direct. I ran the, the right off the... With a, with a wire right off their box. Right. Okay. And um, now, uh, I didn't get anything over five. Now, wait a minute. When you yeah. say five, I don't know what that means. If you're saying five megabits a 500. second... 500. 500. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, 500. So, now, uh, they, I, I went back to talk to them, and they said, well... That may be a certain speed, but you're getting the bandwidth is what you want. And I go, well, I understand that. But uh, whoever told you that's a nitwit? Yeah, that's what that's bandwidth what equal. <laughs> they're the same thing. Yeah, okay. <coughs> If they're uh, saying you're, you're going to get 1,000 megabits per second, mm -hmm. of course there's overhead. Of course there's overhead, but you should get somewhere fairly close to 1,000 on a speed test, 800, 900. If you're getting 500, and you've, by the way, don't try just one. Try netflixfast.com, speedtest.net. Go to dslreports.com and try their speed test. Right. I, I yeah. should point out that 500 is probably more than you'll ever need, but you're paying for a gigabit, and it's reasonable to say, I want <laughs> a gigabit. Well, this is this is what I'm going to tell them next time that hey, you know, I could go to 400 megabit, and it's a lot cheaper. Ah, and, uh, you know, if if that's the case, I said, well, give me that. And now, if right, they cut that in half. Yeah, if they cut that in half, I go. Well, you guys aren't worth anything. <laughs> well, and also remember, it might be a limitation of the computer you're using and the card on that computer. Maybe you can't go that fast. Not every card can do a gigabit. I got gotcha. you. Okay. So, oh, uh, in think, fact, yeah, there's okay. plenty of, there's plenty, you know, you should make sure, look on that laptop, that it has a gigabit Ethernet card. It may have a 100 megabit Ethernet card, maybe all sorts of things. So, there, there, you know, gigabit is so fast that it, you know, it requires very modern hardware to take advantage of it. So, I'm going to... On my on my system here, if I go to fast.com, which is measure, uh, that's a service that Netflix offers that measures your speed. And we're on a 10 gigabit connection, but my card in this computer is a gigabit card. In fact, that's typically the fastest kind of card you're going to get. Many cards are slower than that. But I get 800, I'm getting 850 megabits uh, instead of a gigabit.
but that's because of overhead and stuff like that. So check and see, check and see what the card is capable of in that laptop. You're using a laptop, I presume. Right. In fact, why I'm looking at using an older MacBook. Oh, it may, you know, it may not have a gigabit card in there. Well, that's what I'm going to have to look at. Yeah. yeah. And uh, okay. Well, and then try other speed tests too, of course, because because okay. you know that's another factor. There's a lot of factors, but you're right. If they if they're charging you for a gigabit and they offer a much less expensive 400 megabit, and you're only getting 500, well, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, very so, good. Yeah. Well, Mac, you. I mean, well, thanks a lot. Then, yeah, Leo. my you, pleasure. Uh, my pleasure. Definitely yeah. got me thinking. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Take a look at what that Mac. If it's an older MacBook, it probably is. A 100 megabit Ethernet card. Um, the gigabit, but it'll say gigabit Ethernet if that's what it's capable of. So I'm looking at our, I'm doing now DSL reports, which is actually, I think, a little bit more useful, more reliable than, uh, uh, well, maybe more accurate, let's put it that way, than fast.com. And it's reporting 752 megabits down, but we're getting very close to a, a gigabit up, 945 megabits up. But on a, if you have a gigabit connection, anything over, say, you know, six or seven hundred is probably, you know, full speed. Four or five hundred megabits is too slow. You ought to get more than that. 